anybody else testimony about being here at the House of Healing? You've had a personal counseling session with Brother Michael. Anybody? Get on up here. Somebody. Come on. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, come on. <laughs> come on, Adrian. <laughs> Tell about what God, don't be scared. Tell him what God did. Man, I don't know where to start. <laughs> he helped me, my wife, my children understand so much, you know, by reading the Bible and actually doing what's supposed to be done in the Bible. Getting rid of all the spirits that we have been given to us from birth to present. And just understanding that having God is, you know, we're, there's no limitations. We're capable of all things. So there's not, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. Or, you know, we, we are limitless. You know, by his grace, we are limitless because he is limitless. You know what I mean? And he's of all time. He, there's no time. So it's not like, oh. We're so caught up in the past and the present, trying to get to the future. It's like everything's just all at once. You know, we have to just see what he sees in us. Um, and I just got my rights back. You know, I got my crime set aside. Yes, <laughs> you know, <Lord> God. Uh, <laughs> thanks to, you know, my wife, you know, she wrote a good letter for me, you know, helped me get it all together. She's been my rock, you know, and coming here, we've been here for a couple years now mm -hmm. and just... Everything that Brother Mike had opened to us, we are so caught up into the big church and all the, you know, glamorous lights and, but no gospel. You're like stuck. You're there all feeling good or feeling okay. And then once you leave, you're still like, all right, well, I still have this stuff I'm going through. How do I get rid of it? You know, he helped us understand, all right, read the Bible. This is all in the Bible. You know, things were done in the past so we can understand, so we can get to the future and be healed from everything. So like, man, we're just, we're. Man, we're we're good. Like we're filled with joy, and you know, thanks thanks to this ministry right here, <laughs> and thanks to the Lord's word. Like, man, I mean that's a testimony. For me. <laughs> Amen. So without further ado, let's welcome Brother Michael W. Smith. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Good evening, streamers, YouTubers. Excuse me. Welcome to. Uh, Section four, our final phase of the spirit world. There's a lot to the spirit world, and uh, but I only covered the biblical side of it because that's all I'm really interested in. I'm not interested in other opinions of the spirit world. So that's why I went over the spirit world and had all these scriptures there. <clears throat> I don't care what psychics think of the spirit world. They have a totally different view of it than I do. So, all right. Hear that noise? Yes. Hear that? Yeah. Yes, sir. I can breathe. I got my stents out today. You can drive a truck right through here. <laughs> I can breathe like a baby now. Yeah, I'm just a regular person like everybody else. I uh, asked God to heal me and started to waver and waffle. And when it comes to me, I have less faith for healing than I do others. Thank God I didn't get any amens. <laughs> uh, what we need is a pick-me-up after the Spirit World Seminar. There it is. Ladies' Night is the next seminar. That's our best seminar of the year. You ought to see the Holy Ghost blow through here when the women are here. You wouldn't even believe it. It's fantastic. Every day I'm on the radio, Monday through Friday, in the morning and the afternoon on these radio stations here locally. And this FM station in the West Valley, 96.1, 7 o'clock in the morning. All the radio programs are always on soundcloud.com slash hardcore dash Christianity. <clears throat> Tonight's service is... As Vivian uh, improperly said, all of our services are on Thursday night. It's on livestream.com slash H-O-H-A-Z. She's not in here, is she? And tonight, Friday night, is on YouTube. Okay? Streaming live on YouTube here on that link. 
okay? So uh, everything Vivian said was good, with the exception of that little section there. Hey, nobody's perfect. Nope, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to help us uh, pay for the uh, uh, healing house, by the way, the outside is done. Have you seen it? We're going to turn that into parking. You can park over there now. And we're going to have that graveled, right, John? Yep, graveled and railroad. We're going to have that parking lotted out, and we're starting on the inside of, of the building next week. Okay? So we need some people that can do handyman work. We're going to have the electrical done and something else done right away. Plumbing. The plumbing is going to get done right away, and the electric, electrical is going to get done right away. Somebody sent me a check yesterday to pay for the uh, entire electrical job. Wow. Oh, great. One guy. Couldn't believe it. But uh, the Holy Ghost wants to do something great here in Phoenix. What we're going to do is have a, a nationwide deliverance revival. The first one in the history of the country will be here. Not in this building, but we'll be doing it. So we're going to have that in our future. This is our interim building. We'll be here for a few years, and then we're going to the National Deliverance Center. And so we're going to have a national facility where people are coming in hundreds constantly, getting healed and delivered, going back to their homes, their state, opening up terror cells in their churches, picking off the sick people, picking off the people that need deliverance, They'll set up a terror cell. They'll work that for a few months. Then they'll get caught. They'll get thrown out of their church. Then they'll start another one at the next one. And the thing will start mushrooming. Okay, so we'll, this will be the nationwide hub of God's deliverance program. By faith, we're receiving it. So you've got to have patience and endurance. Yes. Okay, tonight's uh, teaching, as I mentioned, is on our YouTube channel there. And uh, thank you for your donations. When you go out the door, there is a donation box staring in the face on each door. If you feel led to help us out with these projects, God bless you. YouTubers, uh, I tell you about the lists every week. If you go to the website and click the testimonial tab at the top, you will read all the testimonies about people who have been using these two lists that I send them and how they've been wonderfully healed. They're, I'm putting their testimonies right up there. There's a whole rack of them, longer than you are tall. Page after page of people healed. One of the lists is for mentally ill Christians. The other one is for troubled Christians. These two combined make up about 98% of Christianity. Wow. About 98% of the Christians in America are carnal, jacked up Christians. Okay. These two lists, depending on where you fall, will unjack you. That's uh, Hebrew. Here's our media mis ministry goals. YouTubers, you are to set up your terror cell in your church. A terror cell is a what? It's a cell that tortures the devil. You open up the terror cell. You start picking off the sick people. You start paying the devil back for the miserable life he dumped on you. Didn't get any amens there. That's discouraging. Amen. You guys should be looking for some payback. Yeah. I am. Speaking of that, say hi to my girl Tracy. She's watching tonight. She's looking for some payback. We're gonna. I've got your spot here, honey. I'm just keeping it warm for you. Amen. Thank you for helping us with the healing house. That is fantastic. The money's coming in. The people are stepping up to help. God love you. Don't forget July 8th. The Children's Deliverance Service, the last one we had, was fantastic. I was in my office. I had two counseling appointments that Saturday. I got done with the second one. I think the second one no-showed. So I got, got to the Children's Deliverance Service in here late. I couldn't believe it. So as I walked in, I felt the Holy Ghost, and I started picking off kids. I walked up to that one, grabbed them. Within a minute, the demons were flying out of that one. Then I grabbed the next one. Boom. Then I grabbed the next one. Bang. The demons are flying out of them. Then I got two adults. I hit five people in a row. And that was when the service was over. Those were stragglers. It was, it was unbelievable. It just went bang, 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 bang. The Holy Ghost moving. So if he did it then, he will, he will do it again. July 8th, be here. 
The training starts at 9. The service starts at 10. Saturday, July 8th. Part 4, the last part of the spirit world. You know, I'm tired already. <laughs> making announcements. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just go to the altar call now. Let's, let's pray. <laughs> You folk, these folks smell good. <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> when you start taking things for granted in life, sometimes a good Lord will send you something. Hey, you take breathing for granted? Yeah, I do. Okay. I don't take it for granted anymore. Now, now people who stink smell good to me. <laughs> attitude adjustment. Thank you, Lord. Need an attitude adjustment. Here we go. Tonight's uh, final teaching is on familiar spirits. These are the chess players of the spirit world. These are the kingpins of the spirit world. Familiar spirits. They are something else. These type of demons are super smart, super powerful. They can perform miracles. They can impersonate the Holy Ghost. They do so many things. It's utterly amazing. You mess around with familiar spirits or witchcraft, you will regret it the rest of your life. If you were puttering around with witchcraft in your home as a kid, or in high school, or at slumber parties, or whatever, you're going to pay for it the rest of your life. You're going to get physically sick, mentally sick, weird things are going to happen to you. These things can put curses on people like a drop in a, just drop in a hat. Bang, there's a curse on you. These demons are super dangerous, and they're super smart. You've got to be a genius beyond comprehension to run Mormonism, Christian science, the Jehovah Witnesses, and make up an, a worldwide religion. Now that is an intelligent person. Here's some more uh, symptomatology of familiar spirits. By the way, I've been getting a lot of people come in for some reason lately doing Christian yoga that are infected with spirits. That's weird. I've been getting a lot of those lately. That's a red flag area. I need to do some research on Christian yoga. Something's wrong there. Exactly sure what it is. Okay. Well, Let's. Uh, as soon as you are in these different positions, you are opening, opening yourself up to demons. Oh, you are? I know. Based on these positions, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, let's go to necromancy. That's a hot topic. What is that? Yeah, talking to dead people. Now, years ago when I was young, these were your top two uh, familiar spirit carriers here in America. Remember these people? Probably don't. They were very famous back in the 60s and 70s when I was young. Nowadays, they've been replaced. There's a whole new slew of these poor people. They have familiar spirits. They get this, this prediction right, then they get that one wrong. Then they get this one right, then they get that one You can't trust the demons. But they will give you something, even if it's wrong. And they do give you a lot of correct stuff, too. Okay? This lady here, Brown, she's dead. That lady has her own. Uh, the Long Island, uh, what's her name? Long Island Medium. Long Island Medium here. She still has her show, right? These two guys are very popular, Von Prague and Edward. Edward was here a few months ago. He travels around like a circus. This is the number one guy now. He's just loaded with familiar spirits. He has <laughs> tremendous demonic powers and has strange physical manifestation while he's performing his readings. Yeah. You ever seen him? Nobody? Okay. Satanic cults are the result of familiar spirits. Look at these people. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, Moon's dead. Lama's still alive. Right? Uh, here's the guy, Miranda in Florida. He had a huge following down there. Said he was Jesus Christ when he first started. Then he switched over to it. Said he was the Antichrist. Then he died of cancer. <clears throat> so, here's Traveser, the North, uh, what's that? New Mexico cult. He's in, he's in prison for pedophilia. There's Tony Alamo. Remember him? Tony Lamo called from Arkansas. Uh, I had a young kid that came here from that cult. His name was Nick. He had paranoid schizophrenia. He went into the cult without paranoid schizophrenia, came out with paranoid schizophrenia. They dumped him in the middle of 
downtown Los Angeles, down near the airport, and just left him because they couldn't control him anymore. God healed him here. Here's a guy who was loaded with familiar spirits. Guyana. Yeah, well, he was something else. Here's another poor guy loaded with him, the Hellbop group. When's a Hellbop come around next time? Anybody happen to know? Them? Comes around every, what, 13 years or something? You know, it'll be here soon. Then we'll have another group manifest. They all killed themselves. Here's this guy in Texas. Remember him? Yeah, they're all dead. Here's Warren Jeffs, the uh, Mormon cult leader. He's in prison now for the same thing, pedophilia. Here's a pleasant gentleman. <laughs> the nation of Islam. American Islam is totally different than Sunni and Shia Islam. Don't have time to go through all that tonight. Those are three horses of different colors. But they all go to Allah. Okay? Very similar in Christianity. You got your Luther, Lutherans, Episcopals, Methodists. You got Catholics, Protestants. They all go to Jehovah, but they have different systems. Right? That, that's true with Islam. These uh, familiar spirits are so powerful they can cause... These religions, they invented them. Buddhism. Buddhism's older than Judaism and Christianity. Hinduism. Uh, Kachina dolls. Very dangerous. Native American stuff. Extremely dangerous. A couple of years ago, I went to a seminar up in Prescott. The, almost the whole ministry team went with me. I think it was on a Saturday night. Well, we had a spectacular service. There was all kinds of people delivered that night. Several people were healed, and they never invited me back. <coughs> never invited me back. You know why? I think I do. They had, they were, they had uh, tables of Indian jewelry they were selling out there, and then I was showing how these, these Indian ju jewelry, this all, stuff's all demonic, and that they put blessings on it when they make it, and it has certain symbolism. I said, you got to be very careful when you're around Indian jewelry. And uh, let me give you a little tip. If you want to get invited back somewhere, don't ruin the commerce there. <coughs> Buddhism, Wicca, Hinduism, these are the top two familiar spirits in all the world, Mother Mary and Allah. They're the most powerful of all familiar spirits. They are in Incredibly powerful. Voodoo is real. Wow, you can get a curse put on you. These demons are vicious. And they, they are real. And they work. They work. Extreme danger here. But to summarize it all, Paul does that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He says the things that the Gentiles, that's the Greek word ethnos, it means nations. The things they sacrifice to, they sacrifice to this is daimonion in Greek, demons and not God. So all these gods of all these religions, Paul said, are actually specific demons. And they're actually familiar spirits. They do not sacrifice to God, they sacrifice to demons. And I do not want you to have fellowship, koinonia, a partnership or a relationship with Demons, for obvious reasons. First Timothy chapter 4, The Spirit speaks expressingly, In the latter days some shall, one, depart from the faith, and two, give heed to planos, seducing spirits. They will start teaching doctrines of demons. Didascalia in Greek means teachings of demons, daimonian, and they will speak lies in hypocrisy. And that's what all religions are, even the Christian type religions. They're all lies. It's all a big fat lie. If you make up something that's not in God's word, you just made it up. There goes TBN. If you make something up, it's human, right? It's from, from humans. Can't trust humans. 
We tried that once. Uh, Adam E. What was her name? Eve. Can't trust humans. <clears throat> Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's four, five uh, English words. Is actually one Greek word. Cauteriazo means to cauterize or have your conscience hardened. Once a person's conscience cauterizes, they're almost impossible to reach. You can't reach them under normal circumstances. They have to be broken to get to them. So if I'm doing a counseling session, for example, with somebody who has a seared conscience, it's a short session. And I kind of get to the point and I explain it to them, you know, gently but firmly and bluntly how, what, what kind of trouble they're in and what it's going to take to get them to get healed. And if your conscience is seared, uh, Karen, will you do me a favor? Karen, honey, would you shut these sanctuary doors for a second, please? Sorry about that. <clears throat> if your co conscience cauterizes, you can't receive truth. A seared conscience won't receive truth. Uh, this door here, too. Thanks. That one right there. Thank you. Just shut that door. Yeah, that door. Thank you. Okay, and then the way it cauterizes, you start making stuff up. Familiar spirits use Christianity to make stuff up. Here's what you do. You start making up stuff about marriage. You start making stuff up. You get in all kinds of trouble. You can't marry under these circumstances, you can't under those, and this and that, and there it goes. Pretty soon you got your little doctrine whipped up. And then you got to have restrictions on foods. We only eat certain type of... It, in Islam, for example, Ramadan, you have, during the month of Ramadan, you fast all day and you eat at night. And that's, somebody made that up and said, hey, that's what we do. So that's what they do. Just because you make something up doesn't mean it has anything to do with God. Yeah. Oh. Foods. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going through here. Familiar spirits love to teach Christian doctrines. That's their main strike. Because Christianity is what they really want to destroy. And here's how you do it. In fact, I'm teaching a this subject next Friday night, the simplicity of Christ, but I'm not going to teach it now, obviously. But these doctrines, these Christian doctrines, a bunch of spirit-filled Christians got together and put their heads together, clunk, 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 and they made up these doctrines. And these familiar spirits are helping them make them up. Here's how it works. I'll explain it in detail next Friday. The more complicated you make Christianity, the poorer it works. That's right. That's right. So what you got to do is you got to cook, cook up a crock of crap. <laughs> <laughs> and you, if you're a self-preservationist, you have to do that to generate revenue. Yep. Nobody in their right mind would teach like I do. Nobody would. Not, not one pastor in this town would ever say the stuff I say. Why? It's a self-perpetuating system. Mine is not. If you sh don't show up here, I'm showing up whether you're here or not. If there's nobody here but my staff, I will force them to sit here. <laughs> and then I'll go home, and I'm fine. See, when it's not about you, it gives you a different perspective on people. See, this is Father's business, so that's all I, my business. That's right. You. That's Father's business. It's not me. So I don't have to sit around making up doctrines that are interesting, funny, deep, deep. Oh, everybody loves deep. If you get deep, you also get screwed. Yes. Because the more complicated you make Christianity, when it was built for simplicity, the further you drift away from God. That's right. 
So you got to come up with all these weird doctrines. Here's a, I, these aren't all of them. I just thought I was just listing stuff on the top of my head. But these doctrines are promulgated all over the United States. These are Christian doctrines. Uh, all kinds of weird stuff and how it works and why it works is all promulgated now around the United States. Very weird stuff. The, the more complicated it gets, the weirder it seems to get. And all of it is just no good. Time travel, DNA cleansing is big now. That's starting to sweep. Transfiguration anointings, all oh, those are big. You got to get your bloodline cleansed. You don't have your, you. If you don't get your bloodline cleansed, that means you're a bloody, unclean person. So don't you see? Don't you? Aren't you getting it? Yes. Aren't you understanding? If you don't come up with a bunch of crap, you can't sell a bunch of crap. Yeah, that's it. You can't sell nothing. That's it. <laughs> yeah. See what a master's agree to do for you. <laughs> see, you get that one. Yeah, you don't have what I got. <laughs> you can't sell nothing. So you got to come up with something. And so everybody in America, the carnal Christians, they get tired of hearing the same old stuff. So I want something new. The apostles never come up with anything new. It was day one, the resurrection. Day, drop dead day, it's the resurrection. They never went into something new. Dead apostle anointings. Grave soaking. Oh, wow. Do you know you can go out to some minister's grave, lay on the grave, soak on the grave. You got, don't know this? What are you, all backslid? Uh, you soak on the grave. <laughs> these, these are kook city doctrines designed to generate DVDs and CDs and revenue because you can't sell nothing. You need prayer to get rid of chemtrails. I had those all around me. I finally worked off of them. <laughs> But they all came back when I got scared about the flat earth because I never knew where the edge of it was. So the, then the chemtrails came back. And then I came down here and I saw a Nephilim out in the parking lot. I thought it was just a Mormon ward leader, but no, it was actual Nephilim running out there. So now I got upset about that and then the chemtrails came back. Stop it. The, these doctrines are designed to complicate Christianity and ruin it Causing strife and debates. If I come up with a new doctrine, demonic chemtrails. I don't believe that. You do believe it. Oh, now you two have an argument over it. You two have a discussion over it. Oh, you jip your two cents in. All of a sudden, you got four people jacking around with chemtrails, and these people over here who need miracles of healing and deliverance and need some love from God aren't getting it because you're busy with arguing chemtrails and flat earth. Amen. <clears throat> Don't you see how the familiar spirits do it? They're geniuses. We're idiots. Yes. Let's get these busybody, nincompoop, carnal, asinine Christians jacking around with chemtrails and flat earth while we get these people to go right straight to hell. It works. You're too busy to help somebody. You're worried about where the edge of the planet is. <laughs> Okay. Familiar spirits love movies, man. They'll crank them out left and right, these things. But here's how they do it, though. Check it out. They make it seem good. They don't come out with a bunch of evil because that's going to degrade the marketplace for them. They have to come out with something good. It seems good. There's a good message to it. It's got some goodness in there, you know. Uh, the underdog wins, uh, people change, now they love. There's a good message behind familiar spirit teachings. They never just come up with something with raw hate. Okay? These are all demonic things. Narnia, that's all total insanity. That's white witchcraft. Angels are a big move for familiar spirits. They love sending people visions or apparitions. And they fake them out using little cupid baby angels because they're so sweet and so nice. 
<laughs> See, they don't come at you with, you know, t they want sweet and noise. Why? They're smarter than we are, Jack. They're, they're out thinking us. Oh, the Cupid angel, look at that. So sweet. See? The devil will give you whatever he has to give you to get you to lay your guard down and just relax and let me do it. Just relax and let me do it. I'll figure it out for you. Female angels are very popular and wings are popular. Where did you get the idea angels had wings? Just because two types of angels had them. The Bible doesn't say angels have wings. That's right. Does it? No. It said two types of angels have wings. What if there's 50 types of angels? Well, 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 how do you know? Well, I went there. You did? Be down here at the altar tonight. If you've been to heaven or took a trip to heaven, you'd be down here. You're in some bad trouble. If you see a bunch of winged angels in your living room, dude, run out the back door. Uh, here's some angels that uh, young men seem to see occasionally here. Lonely men seem to see these. They're available. Uh, widowed. Widows or uh, lonely females tend to see these type of angels. The devil knows what kind of angel to send you. So they analyze your personality and then they send you whatever angel they feel like you'll accept. If you've seen more angels than Peter and Paul, boop, red flag. Red flag. You in trouble? No offense. You ain't Peter. You ain't Paul. No offense. What are these things that familiar spirits are teaching? Their main goal is to teach you about the other Jesus, the one they promote and they market. Joseph Smith didn't know these scriptures. He got caught in the woods. Remember? Jehovah came to see him in the woods. Man, then Jesus came and saw him. And then Moroni came and saw him. Once you start accepting familiar spirit apparitions and events in the spirit world, if you accept it, you, they'll send you another one. Why are they doing that? They're trying to get you to focus on that and not God's holy word. Anything they can do to take you out of that Bible in your lap that you never open, that's what they want. And if they got to give you a baby angel, she's so sweet. They're so nice. That's what they'll give you. What do I need to give you to keep you out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? What do I got to do? Romance? Money? Whatever I got to give you to keep you out of the four Gospels, they will give you. All right, well, then uh, <clears throat> Paul said, we've gone over this before, alos is a Greek word. It means something different but very similar. Two things that are different but similar, right? So, for example, here's an orange and a tangerine. They are alos, they're different, but they're very similar. Here are the Greek word heteros, right here, means very different in kind and quality. Two things that are very different. Look, for example, these two fruits here are very different. Very different. Now let's apply it then. First Corinthians, uh, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter eleven. I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, that your minds should be corrupted from the next week's message, simplicity that is in Christ. Matthew eleven. When John heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. Are you he that should come, or do we look for a different one? Wow. John, while he was under stress and pressure and torture, as we all would have done, lost sight of Christ. So he says, the one I baptized can't be the right one. 
so Jehovah is going to send a totally different one. So he sent his disciples to check it out. Jesus never answered him. He said, do we look, shall we stick with you or should we wait for a totally different Jesus other than you? You out the door, we'll take a new one. Jesus never answered him. He said, watch this. Now go back and tell John what you just saw. Oh, what a great Bible study that is. Don't have time for it tonight. But telling somebody something, 90% of the time, doesn't work. They don't listen. They'll rationalize it out. They'll explain it away. They'll nitpick it loose. If you show them something, <coughs> that's how you teach them. In America, we call them trade schools. <laughs> that's right trade schools I went to college studying like crazy looking at the books taking notes lectures right forgot most of it <laughs> forgot most of it see if trade school totally different hey today is read that study that okay now we're gonna take the engine apart I remember that. Oh, that makes sense. This adds up. Oh, I learned it. Click. It's there. Jesus said, hey, look at this. I'm taking you to trade school, Holy Ghost style. Heal, blind, deaf, demon possessed, resurrected from the dead. Go back and tell John what you saw and what you heard. Yes. And he did. And it clicked when John got that information. Even though he was tortured, even though he was starving. And they were beating on him. It clicked in his spirit. My God, that's exactly what the Messiah was predicted to do. Exactly what they saw. He made it. And he just told him, what'd you say? Yeah, are you, are you the one? John wants to know if you're the one or you're going to get a totally different one. What'd you say? What you, what you talking about, Willis? You idiot. Look at you, moron. I, what are you? Go on and tell him and tell him to knock it off. Straighten him out. Nope. He would have succumbed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had a lady come into my office one time. Brother Mike. Brother Mike. What? <laughs> and I'm secretly praying, Lord, I'm in trouble. Help me. <laughs> I, over 35 years of counseling, I can spot trouble within seconds. <laughs> I'm getting a couple of willies here tonight, but anyway, that's another story. <clears throat> she says, "I just I've been praying. I don't know. I can't. I've, I can't feel God. I can't get a touch from God. I don't, I don't know if He loves me. I don't know. I just can't get through. Something's not. What? Mind if I'm praying for you for a second? Okay, but <laughs> see." When you hear an okay and a but, you're in deep trouble. And right behind that but is an avalanche. <laughs> if you don't catch it at the but, 20 minutes, gone. I caught it. What? Excuse me. I just want to Okay. Pray the simple prayer, Lord. She loves you. You know, she's having a down period like, like we all do. I've had them too. I know you love her. I want you to bless her and take this anxiety out of her soul. She's so anxious right now. I look over at her, she's starting to cry. The Holy Ghost already jumped on her and didn't even get half the prayer up. She left the office happy. Now, had I told the other stunt, that most people pull. Well, what do you mean? Now listen, the scripture says that, and that scripture says this, and you know better than that, and you know better than that. What's wrong with you? What's your, what's your problem? She would have gone out more stressed out than she was when she came in. I hope the YouTubers are listening. <laughs> anyway, there's another Jesus out there, but this one, some of them are totally different, but some of them, my God, they look 
about right. Check it out. 1 Corinthians 11 again. If someone comes preaching another Jesus, allos, they can preach another Jesus like Mormons. If you listen to their preaching on Jesus, that sounds pretty good. Right? If you listen to Jehovah Witness, mmm, that's, yeah, Jesus, yes, that sounds like, that sounds like, no. It's another Jesus of similar kind, orange, tangerine, whom we have not preached, Paul said, and if you receive another spirit, that's the Greek word heteros, totally different spirit. A familiar spirit is a polar opposite to the Holy Ghost. There's nothing similar about them. He has nothing to do with them. They're impersonating what he does to fake you out, us out. They impersonate him. Although they have nothing, there are no similarities at all. Or if you receive another gospel, heteros, there's a totally different gospel out there. Have you ever seen it? Book of the Mormon. Totally different gospel. New World Translation, Jehovah's Witness. The Bible reprinted versus totally changed fabrications. Okay, Scientology, another good example. Galatians 1, Paul says to these uh, Messianic Jews, the familiar spirits had moved in and they had pulled the Galatians from the glorious gospel of Christ and they were mixing it with a little leaven to leaven the whole lump with Judaism. They were taking Judaism and Christianity and mixing it, which you cannot do. Judaism and Christianity do not mix, period. Amen. I've got some emails on that, but I've had them before. Look, I marvel that you are so removed. If you mix something in with truth, it becomes false. A little leaven leavens the whole <coughs> different, heteros, totally different gospel. That's a totally different gospel. Judaism and Christianity is a totally different gospel, not God's gospel. We need to wear beanies. You need to eat a feast. You need to wear, boop, hold it, nah, whoa, cut. But the Jewish voice, they told me that I was supposed to do. I don't give a crap what the Jewish voice told him. Paul told me this. Now you take a stand, you decide. I'm staying here, not going with Jewish voices. That was for me. There's not another. Allos, uh-uh. This is a totally different gospel. See? Now, there's some that trouble you, and I would they will pervert the gospel of Christ. How do you do that? You mix in something else with the gospel, and you have a perversion. Similar to other perversions. Like what? Well, me having sex with a third grader. What is that? Pedophilia. Pedophilia. That's a sexual perversion. It's also a felony. Me having intercourse with another guy. It's homosexual. It's a perversion. <clears throat> I did a radio show on Jimmy Carter last week. Yeah, yeah it was very good. Yeah. And... Uh, Jimmy Carter is again little leaven leavens the whole lump. You got this Baptist theology and you mix in worldliness and you get Jimmy Carter. And I was quoting him exactly on the radio program. Exactly what he said about these important issues in the Bible. He was contradicting him and this guy taught Sunday school for 30 years. It's a perversion, folks. Familiar spirits are perverts. Galatians 1, though, now Paul says, listen, I don't care if an angel from heaven 
comes down here and preaches another gospel to you. That's a pretty bold statement. Well, this is even bolder. Place a curse on that angel. Anathema is what? Yeah, you can't put a curse on somebody. You're out. You're out with a curse. They used to call it, I don't th you, why don't you just eat worms and die? You ever heard of that curse? Worm curse? Yeah. It used to be big in the 70s, yeah. God, don't do that. It's a verbal curse you put on someone. You can curse people. People have that power to curse other people. Number one curse in America is self curses. Yes. Self curses are number one by far. <coughs> Just had it this week. In fact, I put it on Facebook. I was counseling with a lady who had a chronic negative thought disorder, and I was talking to her about uh, what God God loved her, and he had some several things he wanted to do with her. He had all these bell blessings he wanted to give her. And she comes back to me, and within 45 seconds, I timed it. I happened to be looking at my cell phone. And she said five negative things about herself in 45 seconds. And I counted them up. And I read them back to her. I said, do you realize in, in the last 45 seconds, you, this is what you said to me. Click, 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 click. <clears throat> no, I didn't know that. Did you just say that? Well, yeah, I guess I did say that. Your brain has been transformed. You've been brainwashed because you think negative things for the last four decades that your mind is now programmed to automatically think negative things. So you automatically say negative things and you don't know you're doing it. In, this, in the secular world, we would say it becomes second nature to you. It's just second nature to me. I always do that. No, no, that's not it. It's demonic. She said five negative things. Now, first of all, she can talk fast. You got to get five negative things about yourself. You got to be pushing it in that shorter period of time. I said, everything you said to me, ma'am, is a total lie. You lied to me. You lied to me five times. Here's your lies. I read them back to her. You're a liar and you're lying to me. God told me to talk to you. He told me to help you and you're calling me a liar. You're calling him a liar. You are a walking bag of lies. Brother Mike, can you give me a call tonight? Yeah, I'd be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> the woman pauses on the phone and the Holy Ghost bailed me out. It paused. If you can get that pause in there, if you hear the pause when you're talking to somebody, that's the Spirit of God. If you don't get a pause, I keep rambling. That's the demons reprocessing, regurgitating the printed out system of lies that runs through their head constantly. <clears throat> that gal's whole life was changed after one session. A completely different person. She saw everything totally different. I put it on Facebook. That was a gal her knees got healed. If you happen to have read that. But anyway, there's another Jesus out there. Sorry. And he wants to, this, this fake Jesus, familiar spirit Jesus, wants to mix religions. This is one of them he likes. Uh, here's ones he likes. These are mixed Jesus religions. Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian yoga. That's actually an oxymoron. But it's spreading through the churches like you can't believe. There's something really wrong with it, and I don't exactly know what it is yet. I need more research on that. And uh, here's an entertainment Jesus. This one is, is sweeping the country, and it's going to hit Phoenix like a juggernaut later this year, early next year. I mean, it's big. It's spreading everywhere. Giant Christian performances are sweeping the country. And it's all an entertainment Jesus. It's all pump you up Jesus. It's all make you temporarily feel better until you have to go back out in the parking lot 
to your sucking miserable life but you get a little break in there because you're getting some entertainment. Everybody's jacked up. They're all emotional. Oh, they're singing. Oh, they look like they're having a good, good time. They're all singing God bless you to each other. They're pretending to care. It is fantastic. But unfortunately, when you leave the entertainment, Jesus, you got to go back out to your car. Oh, no, I got to go back to my car. And you know where your car leads you? To the gates of hell, your home. <laughs> Goodness, this is good preaching. Mike, I can't wait to come back. <laughs> Section uh, seven, let's go. How do spirits get into people? How do they, well, you already know. Uh, but the subtle part of it is what's dangerous. You know how spirits get into people. If you shoot her, you're going to pick up a demon. If you sleep with him, you're going to pick. We all know these types of sins all bring in spirits. That's a third grade concept. But what people don't know, Christians, is that there's subtle ways spirits use to get into your brain. And here's one of their favorite is music, satanic music, and games. Volume up. Is the volume up as high as it can higher? Okay. I just have that extensive board, two indexings. It actually got made if your nails, I'll do. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> You can pick up spirits playing with those games, right? This one here is extremely popular. Yes. Well, what's your name? You're not pushing that, are you? No, I'm not. Just trying to get my fingers on it. L. I. S. Lisa? Who's Lisa? Did you push that? I did not push that. Seriously? None of you guys no. push that over the X like that? No. Uh, mm -mm. You guys doing something to, underneath the table? No. no. So it looked like it moved all on its own. Give it another shot, see what happens. Okay. And you guys are saying you're not pushing this, right? No. Mm. This thing's just like a, a regular board mm -hmm. to Captain Howdy. Not pushing that. Mm -mm. Ooh. Come on, you guys are f***ing off, right? Yeah, it's too uh, weird for me. Mm -mm. And you want me? Mm -mm. And you didn't push that over like that? No. Uh, okay, I just want to double check something here. There is nothing going on underneath. You no. Wow, that's, that's pretty jacked up. That's putting it mildly. Uh, this is a powerful way to pick up spirits. I did a little Facebook uh, teaching on that one day. Man, I had so many people calling me on that one, abortions. Uh, if you've had an abortion, you can pick up spirits of death or murder. And they'll stalk you. They'll get into your family. But, uh, as you know, abortion is a forgivable sin. And that can be washed away in the blood and you can be delivered. And healed. If you've had an abortion, do not let that keep you from the Lord. Physical trauma as a child, let spirits in the child's body. Don't believe what the devil tells them. You're pathetic. You can't do anything right. You disgust me. Just shut up. You can't be my kid. You're worthless. Hey, stupid, don't you know how to listen? You're never going to amount to anything. Why don't you go find some other place to live? Words hit as hard as a fist. Stop and listen to what you're saying. You might not believe your ears. I wish you were never born. Take time out. Don't take it out. 
Yeah, that's a lot of truth in that. You know, if you have a pregnancy and it's unexpected, you're going to, you know, there's all kinds of negativity going to surround that thing. You can put curses on your fetus just by speaking into it. And those spirits, they say, oh, you're cursing. Good, we'll take them. You don't want them? We got them. And they're born physically ill, mentally ill, ADHD, ADD, everything. All right, let's take a look at Kundalini spirits. They're spreading all over the United States, particularly here in Phoenix. We have one of the hotbed areas of the United States for Kundalini charismatic prophetic demons. These spirits get into people's bodies by laying on of hands, and they lay hands on each other in these services, and they transfer these spirits around. And these demons are extremely intelligent. <clears throat> They make the person feel good, and they give them uh, manifestations that they like, weird manifestations, strange activities in the body, uh, weird sensations, physical sensations, jerking motions, all kinds of weird things happening. It's going on all over the place. But Paul warned, uh, Tachyus, you don't... Suddenly or quickly, without, without a reason, lay your hands on anybody because you could become contaminated. Agnos means uncontaminated or pure. Okay? That's what happens. What you're doing there is you want everybody to have a f sensations. You want them to feel something because they come to your service and they need to leave with something. So when you run them through these fire tunnels, these people that are putting their hands on them, you don't know who they are and you don't know what they've been involved in. They could have been on porn two days ago or been in witchcraft. They could have just gotten saved a short period. You have no idea who these people are. So these spirits transfer in from the ministers who claim to have these great powers and the people are ignorant and they don't see it coming. They think it's God. That one guy was jerking around there manifesting demons. They thought that was the Holy Spirit moving. Some lady's head spinning around like the exorcist. Oh, that's God's anointing. It's all deception. And they're transferring spirits around. Demons can get into ministers who don't know they have demons. Who's that guy? Robert Slaridan. Who is that? Nobody knows? He's one of the top Christian authors in the United States. He wrote a book called God's Generals. He's famous. He had a beautiful church out in California. Big church, booming, growing like crazy. They caught him having an affair with the youth minister. The youth minister was a male. Come to find out the guy is gay. Why, why is that happening? Once these spirits get in your body and you don't know they're in there, they give you desires that you don't want. And so if you're 
if you've grown up in a church denomination or in a Christian religion that says Christians can't have spirits, then you assume you don't have any. And so these spirits get to operate in the church incognito. Nobody knows they're there. <clears throat> Who's this guy here? Famous Baptist minister, had a whole, whole secret life. Southern Baptist, the president, had a mistress, a mansion, uh, everything. It was unbelievable. Who are these guys? Yeah. Again, both, again you notice all these people are they're, they're saved and they're good people. Good people can have spirits. You're not an evil person because you have spirits. Who's this guy? Ted Haggard. Ted Haggard. Yeah. <clears throat> What's going on there? It's really easy to see. Uh, the guy's bisexual. Okay. He got picked. He got abused as a kid. The spirit got in when he was young, and when he, later on he got saved. Okay. So. This is a beautiful example of how it works. I'm born here. I get molested here. Boom. It got in. I get saved here. Bang. I disciple myself here. And I realize that homosexuality is a sin. And I don't like it. I don't want it. But I have these strange uncontrollable urges that I can't account for. So the person is confused. Their spirit man got saved, and the Holy Spirit entered their spirit man. They can't figure out why they have these same sex urges. So then later on, in periods of weakness, they start acting out on those urges in secret, keeping it covered up because they are afraid and they are ashamed. They think it's them. The person thinks it's them. So they hate it, and they are ashamed, and they don't want to do it anymore. Okay? Same thing for drugs or porn or anything else. Pick your poison. You soon, eventually, will act out on it. Then you repent. Then you last a while, and you act out on it again. Then you repent again. And you have this up-and-down Christian life that you can't account for causing you shame, embarrassment, frustration, anger, and humiliation. Okay? In the case of a minister who has all these symptoms I just said, which is this guy, great example, he preaches against homosexuality in public. Why? Because he hates that part about himself. He had many sermons. He got in trouble with the secular media all the time bashing homosexuals. But don't you see behind the scenes, Satan set the whole thing up. It was a setup. He does an unsaved person who comes out of the closet. That's bad and that's tough. That's not what he wants. He wants some Christian preaching against homosexuality who gets caught later, which causes a scandal to Christianity. Some guy coming out of the closet, it's no big deal. You've met him, haven't you? I have. They came in for counseling. Boy, what happened to your third husband? Oh, gosh, he ran off with his boyfriend. How'd the three kids take it? Don't you, don't you, aren't you getting this? I mean, here. You're not saved. You're born here. You get abused here. You pick up a same sex attraction spirit, a lost demon. You hate it. It doesn't fit into society. Your family hates it. If you come out of the closet, they will reject you. If you come out of the closet, you'll lose your job. Whatever. You can't do it. So you play the society game. You force yourself to get married, society says, that. to have kids, society wants you to do that. And pretty soon as you get older and the kids get older, you can't take it anymore. So you come out of the closet, as they say in the secular world. 
They want to be me But nobody understands that's not them. It's them It's not the person See now the big deal is transsexuals in three or four years. It'll be polygamy Okay, that's not hit us yet. That's coming up now. It's transsexuals I'm coming out of the closet and the government says hey It's them So therefore all the bathrooms are he she's And you can't okay, you've seen it all over the news. I mean everybody knows what I'm talking about But it's not them They don't think they're a male they think they're a male. The demons are telling them they're males. They're telling them they're females. Okay. Here's uh, another couple here. Same thing. Uh, this guy was a great faith healer back in the 50s and 60s. He was on that faith healing circuit. He's, he's gay. Uh, there's Jim Baker. He's selling uh, survival kits now. He's back on TV. Here's Todd Bentley. He's got familiar spirits just running amok. Lakeland Revival collapse. Here's A.A. Allen. This guy had a healing gift you wouldn't even believe. I mean, this guy, I don't think there's a miracle he didn't see. He was a monstrous exorcist. He, he would cast demons on people like it was nothing. Nothing. He would, make, he would laugh at the demons and then cast them out. I'm not there yet. Died in a hotel in San Francisco. Drunk. Who's this guy? He had a healing ministry that made A. Allen's look like chicken feed. Chicken feed. This guy was unbelievable. He founded a city on healed people in Illinois. What happened to him? Got familiar spirits. They told him he was one of the two witnesses. He cracked up. Who was that? Hey, oh, did she ever have a healing gift? Wow. What a woman of God. She was unbelievable. Died in Oakland. Prescription drug overdose. Are all these people bad people? No, they're the opposite. They're all good people. Who's this guy? Well, universalist. The demons got in his head. They taught him this whole crazy, another gospel guy. Oh. Yeah, I'll preach the gospel, but if you're a Hindu or a, what, you all go to heaven anyway. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. No problem there. It's it's good. Who's this guy? Man, did this guy have a healing ministry and a gift of knowledge and word of knowledge? He was something, man. Branham was incredible. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he was one of the two witnesses. Picked up familiar spirits. Poor guy. Who are these guys? Oh boy, I can't. I can't go there. Who's this guy? Same thing I just went over with Ted Haggard. Don't you see it? Beaten and abused as a kid. Born here, beaten and abused as a kid. Picked up the spirits here, got saved here, went into the ministry there. Never got rid of the spirits. See. On my website, I call it carry over. What you do, you carry over the spirits from your sinful life into your Christian life because the church has abandoned Christians in America, removing deliverance. So after the person gets saved, they don't go through deliverance. They then go into the ministry with spirits. They have the Holy Spirit. They have their gifts. They have their anointing. And they have spirits. That they carried over from their sinful life. Why? Because they never went through deliverance. What happened to this guy? Same thing. He's in the ministry, takes a church from three people to 300 million people, or whatever it was. Never got rid of that same sex urge, right? It manifested. Big scandal. Died of cancer. What do the demons do with you when they're done with you? You die of cancer. Could this have been avoided? Of course, had this guy gone through deliverance and the 
spirits he picked up as a kid when he was being hurt, had they been removed, you'd have never had a scandal. Why? The good news is, it's not you. It isn't you. It's them telling you it's you. They're telling you you're a pervert. They're telling you you're no good. They're telling you whatever lie it is. They're giving you sensations and urges in your body that are not yours. They give you fears. They give you lusts. They give you pains, strange pains. I had a girl in my office just last Thursday night. Thursday, a lady was in my office and gets sudden pains when the demons attack her. Just instantly. Bang, her neck hurts. Bang, her back hurts. It's not her. You, you get under stress and you automatically go eat something. Give me a pizza. Give me a box of donuts. Give me, that's not you eating. Dude, it's not you. That wasn't him chasing the boys. Okay? That wasn't him doing it. It was them. Oh, brother Mike, you're you're a, you're a uh, you're a false teacher. You're crazy. It's all the flesh. No, listen, fool. The spirits are using your flesh. They use the flesh. The flesh likes donuts. They trigger the urge of hunger through trials, temptations, stress, pressure to click the flesh to sin. Yes. Demons know what they're doing. Christians don't. Correct. There's no demons. It's just your flesh. Jeez. What do you know about that person? You know they know nothing about demons. They have never cast a demon out of anybody, they, but they think they know, making them far more dangerous than I'll ever be. If you're a certified buffoon and you don't know it, you are a danger to society. If you are a jacked up goof and you do know it, that's okay. You're a con artist and you know you're playing. <laughs> Get back to the seminar. I drifted <laughs> off. Oh, here's, here's the false teachers running among. There's no hell. God's too sweet and too nice to send anybody to hell. What? Jeez. Scientology. Wow, this guy is infected with demons. You can't even believe. Okay. <clears throat> Why do deliverances fail? Let's Television, quickly go uh, Evangelist and radio enthusiast Pat Robertson made a major announcement yesterday. He says that God told him terrorists will conduct a mass killing in the United States in late 2007. God told him all this at a prayer retreat. And here's Pat with the news of our doom. It's going to happen. And uh, uh, I'm not saying necessarily nuclear. The Lord didn't say nuclear, but I do believe it will be something like that. It will be a mass killing, possibly millions of people. Oh, all right. <laughs> I think we found our lead suspect. <laughs> but this is um, this is not the first crazy prediction from Pat Robertson. He does it every few months, and fortunately for us, his track record isn't very good. In fact, in order to do some damage control, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, his network, is running this promo right now. In 2004, God told Pat Robertson that President Bush would win re-election in a landslide. In 2005, God told Pat Robertson that Bush would enjoy victory after victory and that his social security reforms would be approved. In 2006, God told Pat Robertson that a tsunami would crash into America's coastline before the end of the year. God is a liar. Paid for by Pat Robertson. Well, it's, you know what? Uh, that's right. But he's not. Let's break this down.
Let's break this down. It's easy to see what's going on. Very easy. If you have an organization, ministry, business, whatever it is, and you have a domineering personality, people treat you with deference. Similar to you at work. There are certain types of bosses, and some of them are horses patoots. <laughs> That's Aramaic. And <laughs> others of them are not. Okay? If you have an, a, a dictatorial, dominant, autocratic type person managing your business, running the show, if you want to stay in that business, you have to learn to, uh, the professional term is, kiss butt. <laughs> a little too real for you? Okay. Robertson has a dominant, autocratic, I'm in charge personality. He's very bright. He's very intelligent. He's very uh, determined. He's a performance-oriented person, a very successful person. And everybody in the ministry has to kick, kiss, butt. Okay? That is unscriptural. When you have a ministry, and the person at the head of the ministry is that type of personality, mega church, regular church, doesn't matter what it is, you are headed for an iceberg. Here's why. Robertson. Much to learn from these people. And he's a good guy. I'm not saying he's not saving. He's, he's a great guy. If you are a dominant personality and you set yourself above others, the people that who are below you, your inner circle, is reluctant to come to you and say to you, hey, you know what? I think you might have done this wrong or that wrong or this or that. In the same way, you would be reluctant to approach a stern boss on your job. He don't want to hear that. I could get fired. I'm not going to get a promotion. What if he thinks I did it? I mean, there's all kinds of thoughts that run through your mind. If you, on the other hand, have a ministry and you try to be a regular person, and people will feel more comfortable with you sitting down and they'll share stuff with you, because they don't fear you're going to dominate them or turn on them or feel bad about them or fire them or what have you. Did I set that up okay? Correct? Yep. Yep. That's, how, that's how life is. <clears throat> because Robertson is a dominant personality, everybody around him is a <laughs> fanny kisser. Therefore, here's the danger of it. When you, and this is for you. I don't care about Robertson. I'm talking to you. You don't want to be that kind of a person because you become full of yourself. And everybody who sees you make a mistake won't come to you and say, hey, we're in trouble. So Robertson every year comes out with his 10 prophetic predictions. Half of them are wrong. The people in the background, when they're at home at night, are going, Jeez. <laughs> what happened, honey? Pat. Oh, not Pat again. Yeah, Pat again. <laughs> oh, my God. He said Martians are going to eat the Attorney General. <laughs> Jeez. God almighty. Jeez. Why don't you tell him, honey? You tell him. <laughs> I got a house payment. I'm making fun of it. Don't you understand? Can't you see it? Yep. It's self-preservation to be a... I actually am a great teacher because I like to choreograph these great teachings. <laughs> Notice that move there? Not a lot of guys have that. <laughs> if you're in a ministry with a dominant, dictatorial, autocratic type person at the top of it, 
you're, you're going to have scandals and you're going to have bad things happening because they don't get any wise counsel from their inner circle. Everybody in a ministry has an inner circle. Everybody has an inner circle. I have an inner circle here. <laughs> that doesn't look like it. I got Kelly. She sends me an email. You know, hey, I don't think we should be doing this and that. What? Is that insubordination? It isn't to me. It would be to Robertson. <laughs> but I want that feedback so I just keep myself as a regular person so somebody could say something to me without having fear of the kind of fear I have for my wife. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm what we call a hypocrite. That's right. I don't believe any of this stuff when she's around. But when I'm here, when I'm here, I believe this. Because it's real. So if somebody, I keep myself as a regular person, so if somebody says something to me, I didn't like this, I didn't like that. Right? Because, uh, let's say we had Pat Robertson and it's had me here. Let's say we had Vivian here. <coughs> Vivian gone, I hope. <laughs> Vivian could come storming in the Pat Robertson office and then she'd be in the unemployment line in about an hour. She could come storming into my office, say the same thing, and it's all good. So Robertson is a victim of his own personality type. Don't you see it? Benny Hinn, all these guys, they run these ministries and they have an inner circle and they're all, mm, mm. they can't come to them and say, Benny, dude, buddy, come here. Now look, at, you were on stage last night and you cursed somebody that don't like your ministry. Dude, we don't curse people around here. <laughs> oh yeah, I shouldn't have been doing that. See, Benny would have saved himself much heartache and much scandal had the inner circle felt comfortable to come to him in a godly fashion and shared some truth with him. Yes. You can't share truth with people you don't, you don't feel comfortable with or you fear. So every year, poor Pat embarrasses the heck out of himself, humiliates the Lord by missing these prophecies when the inner circle should have come to him 10 years ago and said, buddy, you're doing a great job around here. You're fantastic, but we need to make some adjustments here. See? 10 years ago, had I known what I know now, I would have just sent Vivian over to talk to him. <laughs> I would have I'd taken care of Pat. <laughs> now, what's the issue with, with the why? How you get deliverance and why you, why you don't get you delivered. Here it is, right here. You know, it's just these are the standard things you're going to run into, the top seven of, of how you pick up spirits and why you can't get rid of them. And we, we run into this constantly lack of faith, spiritual ignorance, hidden sin that somebody won't, doesn't want to face or won't come, won't come out with, spiritual arrogance, fears, lack of repenting. Some people want to keep their demons. Some people want to keep sin. They don't, they don't want to change. They like it. You know? They need it. Uh, Sons of Sceva had a failed deliverance in Acts 19. Why? These vagabond Jews were running around casting out demons, but they didn't have their own individual relationship with Christ, and they were just learning to repeat prayers. See? If you go through deliverance on the Internet, you go to a website, how do I get rid of demons? And then they give you these prayers to repeat. They help a little bit, but they, they're not going to get the controllers out. You can't just repeat re prayers you're reading. It has to come from in here, in your heart. Uh, some guy wrote a book, you know. Prayers that route demons. Repeat these suckers. Crank, 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 crank. 
Well, if that prayer there happens to click with what you feel, it might it, it would work. But just repeating these other ones out of your head, that they're not going to work. So you get a partial deliverance, and you get these spirits that are still stuck in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can't just repeat a prayer, and, and demons aren't afraid of prayers. You can, you can rattle a prayer off to them; they'll rattle it back. <laughs> well, they like these prayers. Well, these guys were rattling off these prayers that they had learned in deliverance school. They had a guest speaker there and said, "Hey, you know what? I was at a synagogue over in Capernaum, and by I couldn't believe it. Just God, this Paul guy came in, and here's what he said. Oh, what did what did he say?" That's the magic phrase. Yeah, thank you. Glad I went to the seminar. It's worth 50 bucks. Well, they went out and they said, hey, we, and they were probably good people. I mean, I think they were good people. These are not scam artists. They went around, they, they saw these people that were hurting, and good for them. They're, they were good people. They tried to get them delivered, but you can't go to a seminar and take a section out of it and just go with that. It's not going to work. We command you. See, they, they said the prayer. See? And they gave a good source of the prayer. Paul preaches that. Hey, you come out of there by Paul. See? In the spirit world, you can't just drop names. Dropping names doesn't work. It works at cocktail parties. It doesn't work in deliverance. And the spirit says to them, after they read their little phrase out of their deliverance manual. I know Jesus Gnosko. That means they personally knew him. And they knew Paul. Epistemi means they had heard of him. So these demons must have probably seen Jesus at some time, but they had never seen Paul, but they knew who he was, which I thought was interesting. Omniscience is only an ability the Holy Spirit has. That's right. Demons don't have it, and neither do humans. They don't know everything. Demons don't know everything. But the ones that got into you in the womb, they've been with you all your life. They know you better than you'll ever know yourself. But that doesn't mean some other spirit knows you. How's that Henry guy work? Listen, if somebody's coming through here, he starts sweating. <sighs> now, somebody's coming through this. I got an energy coming through. It's, a, it's an older woman. It's on the father's side of the family. Uh, and they're saying that uh, they, they saw you eating uh, fudge yesterday. Oh, great. Okay, we're on, we're on the fudge. Well, what that was, a spirit, a spirit from that person that he's channeling that was with that person their whole life, they know all about that person. So that... They're able to give him information about that person that only that those two people would know, the dead person and the, the relative or friend or whoever. So they're channeling information they got from the dead person. The dead person is burning in hell. They know that. They're just impersonating that person. It's all fake. They're doing it. The person is not there. They're already in hell. And that's how he knows all that intimate information about the, they're flabbergasted, see? But it's all done in a positive context. Notice that. It's done to comfort the person. He wants you to know, Grandma wants you to know that she's watching over you and she's very proud of you getting your GED. And you bet you're able to bake cakes now in cooking. She's happy about your cooking class. She loves you and she's watching. Oh, and the person feels comfort. Oh, that's so nice. See the fraud there? That's how they get you hooked. They're smarter than we are. Well, this demon, as you know, beat the stuff out of them. Come on. Come on. Take a bit. Ash Hadu. Ash Hadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Muhammad, Muhammad, Allah, 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 Allah,
Rasulullah. 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 Aku bersaksi. Aku bersaksi. Bahwa. Bahwa. Tidak ada Tuhan. Tidak ada Tuhan. Yang disembah. Yang disembah. Kecuali Allah. Kecuali Allah. Dan aku bersaksi. Aku bersaksi. Bahwa. Bahwa. Muhammad. Muhammad. Putusan Allah. Putusan Allah. Wahai hey, terus. Kamu sekarang sudah Islam. Kamu mau bernama atau nama kamu yang semula Idris? Idris. Idris saja. Idris. Idris saja. Oke. Okay. Kamu sekarang sudah Islam. Wahai Idris, dengan baik hati. Sekarang kamu satu agama dengan saya. Maka itu kamu tidak boleh sekali-kali menyakiti manusia lagi. Boleh? Kamu berjanji dan kamu tidak akan masuk lagi. Oke, okay, kamu balik ya. Kamu balik ke alam kamu. Dan kamu jangan sekali-kali mengganggu manusia, siapapun dia. Saya berjanji. Ya, yeah, that's a, a, a Muslim Islam deliverance. There, they call demons jinn in that religion, and they are so they're like Catholics. They have a certain uh, group of ministers who are specially trained to do deliverances. Okay, but none of those people ever get delivered. Sometimes the spirits will cough up a few demons and they'll some of them will leave, but the controllers don't have to leave. Власти Иисуса Христа. Заклинаю тебя выйти из него. Запрещаю тебе быть в нем. Голову полностью оставляешь. Навсегда. И ушел. Навсегда. Заклинаю власти Иисуса Христа. Заклинаю выйти из него. Заклинаю. Запрещаю тебя властью Христа. Запрещаю тебе быть в нем. Совсем, совсем. И ушел. И навсегда. И совсем. Навсегда. Места безводные пустые. Знаешь, куда идти. Аминь. Аминь. Okay, and there you can see deliverance, orthodox style. They also have specialized priests that do those deliverances. And they don't work very well because using rituals and forms and prayer, prayers and certain types of prayers, uh, you can get some of the demons out, but you can't get the controllers out. The only way to do that is personal repentance. Here at the Deliverance Center, uh, we cast demons out of people all the time, and almost never do all the demons come out in one session. The reason being, there's a lot of things a person hasn't repented of that the spirits won't let go of. Okay, so on the website, I always tell everybody go to the post deliverance Bible study on the website. So you can renew your mind, so you can finish repenting, so that you can get all the demons out, and so you never have to have them again. But if we just have deliverance services, there's a couple of deliverance ministries in town here that just do that. You come in, you have a big, you get a little teaching, you have to go through some deliverance. Some of the demons come out, they just recycle them later. They all come back. Because you can't get rid of demons if you won't repent and renew your mind. Can't keep them out. 
So you can't have a deliverance ministry without having a full gospel teaching ministry along with it to save the people. Otherwise it won't work. You can't just run around casting demons out of people. It's not going to work. And they could get worse. Matthew 12. Like the church in Hampstead, the Reverend either. Christopher Neil Smith exorcises a young man who dabbled with the occult, believed he raised the devil, and turned to the church. And his peace. Oh God, Son of God, unconquered might, who kicketh all those that are against thee, by his death, has destroyed death, and overcome the prince of death. Deep down Satan under our feet and call these evil forces to depart. <laughs> Deliver him, O Lord, from all evil. Past present and to come, and by thy invading mercy, he may be liberated from this evil, free from all harm, safe from all distress. <laughs> okay, now. Once again, if you don't have proper teaching or repentance or renewing of the mind, and if you go to somebody who themselves are heavily infected with demons, it's hard to get your demons out. And believe it or not, that's fairly common. You go to somebody to get rid of demons who themselves loaded with them, it's normally not going to have a good outcome. All right. Reinfections are what? People who do not renew their minds and who do not finish repenting of their sins. You can't, you can't have a ministry, you can't have anything with God if you're not willing to renew your mind and repent of your sin. You know, that's the unpopular message that nobody wants to preach or teach. Because people get offended, they get discouraged, and they get tired. And the demons leave and then they come back. Luke chapter 11. When they come back, the person feeling better, looking better, seems to be doing better. And they don't understand that when this spirit leaves, the Holy Spirit must take up that space. When the spirit leaves here, the Word of God must take up that space. If you're not going to change and you're not going to repent, you're not going to do anything different, you're going to go back to your old lifestyle. You're going to pick them back up again. And you have to be careful because you might get worse. The ultimate goal of demons is to damn your soul to hell or ruin your Christian life. Here it is. A second goal. If they can't get you in hell, if you get saved, they want to ruin your Christian life. Phase one is go to hell. Phase two, if they fail there, their second phase is to ruin your Christian life. That's what they're doing here in America. Let's get ready to wrap up. Demons have certain manifestations, as you know. Uh, streamers, write, write this down when you go back to look at the video. These are demonic manifestations in the Bible. These are manifestations Jesus got stuck with. He had to face them. Okay? So I had a deliverance minister tell me, once that uh, well, we command the demons not to manifest and we tell them just to come out quietly and just shovel off and disappear, whatever it is. And I said, are you aware that that's unscriptural? Never heard from him again, but <laughs> here's, if, if Jesus got stuck with manifestations, you're going to get stuck with them too. But what he taught was, by example, he never said it, but by example, he didn't focus on the manifestations. <clears throat> so that's what we do here at the Deliverance Center. We focus on you repenting, you forgiving the person, you forgiving yourself, whatever the issue is. Let's focus on that. And then getting the demons out is easy. It's easy to get demons out if you do the proper prep work. Amen. They'll just come right out. I was just telling you about the children's service. I just walked in the door, bang. I mean, I was hitting one after the other.
here are some other ex, uh, demonic manifestations that I personally experienced that, are, that aren't in the Bible necessarily. Um, these different things have happened over the years. Exactly why they happen like that, I, I don't really know. Uh, I've never been that interested in it personally. Some people are. But these things kind of happen. I try to stay focused on what that person needs, on, on them being healed, how they're doing, and what, what they're repenting of. I try to stay focused on the, make it a person-oriented situation, not a spirit manifestation oriented situation you know manifestations can be good because it shows you something's happening and the whole, you can kind of trail the Holy Spirit sometimes through a manifestation but the, but the thing is manifesting is not important that's not the, the person is the most important thing are you helping the person that's that's what you need to focus on okay and these are your keys to deliverance you need to help the people understand that this is what they must do and this is not popular but by the power of the Holy Ghost it is not only possible it is absolute this can be done by God's Holy Ghost power a person can develop a humble heart they can release others of their ought they can forgive them they can learn to use their faith they will, and God will help you every step of the way. These are the things we're trying to teach here so that people can exercise their authority and change their lives and change their families' lives. Because now in our society, unlike, the, say, the 50s, all the kids have got demons now. It's unbelievable how jacked up kids are now. I mean, kids are sick. They're sick. Teenagers are scary. God. When I was a kid, no, kids were not scary. No, nah, not really. Uh -uh. I was in fourth grade out on the playground in Mulberry, Ohio. That's right. I used to live in Mulberry, Ohio. You never even heard of it. Boomy Metropolis. <laughs> I picked up a snowball. I rolled that sucker up, fourth grade, on the playground before school. I looked at that snowball and I said, you know what, I am king of the world. <laughs> I'm not some jacked up fourth, fourth grader with dysfunctional drunken parents. I'm, I'm the king of the world. You see this snowball? Phew, hit a guy right in the head. Bang! <laughs> I go walking out the front. I'm heading up the steps into the school before class out on the playground nailed the guy bang snowball boom nobody saw snowball is something that's made out of snow you make a <laughs> you do, nobody but anyway let's play along with me there's there are snowballs just go with me bang i nailed this guy because hey i was a good pitcher when i was young yeah yeah i had the, i had the arm I'm walking up the steps and suddenly, miraculously, I sense the rapture. A hand grabbed my coat here. I thought, my God, God is taking me to heaven to place me beside the throne. And, I, and I, this hand, literally, I'm having an out-of-body experience. I'm elevated off the ground. My feet are, and I'm being carried into an office down the hall I see the word principal in the door now I'm about ready to fill my pants I know that office oh yes I was stood right here by the wall oh ha, 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 now I'm scared this big guy with a flat top haircut okay you ever see a principal with a flat top haircut run run take it just Stay with me. Run. He picked up a board. What that board have in it? Oh, holes in it. Holes in the board. Bend over. What would you say? Bend over. Have you ever heard these terms, ladies? Man, doesn't matter. Grab your ankles. Don't, don't, don't grab your ankles. Don't do it. Ah, grab my ankles. What are we doing here? Bang! 
I went from the king of the world to a humble slave <laughs> in one swing. I never <laughs> threw a snowball again. <laughs> that was the extent of juvenile delinquency when I was a kid. Nowadays, are you kidding me? Fourth, fifth, sixth grader, they're having sex, taking drugs, and pulling knives on each other. It's unbelievable the sickness and demonic evil spread in this country. It's unbelievable. Pretty soon, the children's deliverance service in a year or so will be the biggest service we have here. This whole place will be filled with kids. That's how sick this thing is. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. That's the problem. Can't get Christians to hate their sin. They won't change. They kind of like it. Hey, you've got personal issues. Arrogance, vanity, pride. You've got a temper. You're yelling at somebody. You've got an attitude. Oh, who, me? They don't want to change. Well, if you don't want to change, the demons go, hey, we don't want to leave. And the Holy Ghost goes, I see your point. You don't have to leave. You got to hate your sin. You got to hate evil. You got to hate the devil. Just like God does. How do you succeed in the spirit world? You must try or test the spirits. Dakimanzo means to test or prove them. How do you test them? Why do you need to test them? Because there's false prophets all over the place. I just played you a couple videos of them. There's false prophets everywhere mentioned in the Bible. Here's just a couple scriptures, YouTubers, of false prophets. How do you know that uh, someone's telling the truth or not from the spirit world? Okay, the Bible says you must... In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word must be established, okay? A few months ago or some time ago, a weird incident happened here. <clears throat> a girl is in my office going through a massive deliverance. It's fantastic. She repented. She did everything. It was great. Uh, she got healed. She got delivered. It was fantastic. I'm telling you, the devil's incredible. She walks out of my office right there around here into the foyer, and there's a guy sitting out there. And the demons in that guy told him, hey, there's your future wife. <laughs> well, he thinks God's talking to him. I'm not making this up. <laughs> well, I don't know anything about it because I'm still in my office. Well, come to find out this relationship start, starts developing Unbeknownst, I don't know anything about it. Pretty soon, the de God tells her he's her he's her future husband. Now they've got both of them deceived. The relationship's going fantastic. Well, then later on, red flags start popping up. Red flags, relationship issues, attitude issues. She starts to get cold feet. She starts to get scared. He says he's staying firm. She had to go through deliverance all over again. She did it yesterday. Had to do it all over again. What scripture did you violate? Thanks for asking. There they are. If God tells you something, if you're the type of person that God talks to, you tell God that you need two or three more confirmations of that. And if he doesn't do it, you got to sit him down and explain it to the idiot. Because a God who doesn't know his own word is a false God. Brother yes, right. Mike, somebody's going to drop a house on you. They are not. God said, if, if he told you to minister to pygmies in Uganda, great. He may have, in fact, told you that. 
two or three more confirmations. You do not start packing to go to God. <laughs> Stupid. How do you test them? Write these down, uh, YouTubers. Here's your big seven. If you go through these big seven, the demons will never catch you. Uh, as my grandpa used to say, with your pants down. He said, you're going to get caught with your pants down. When I was a kid, I never understood what that meant. <laughs> I never got caught with my pants. And what's, what's he talking about? Well, he was talking about getting caught off guard, getting caught in a trap you don't see coming. And that's what he meant, although I didn't understand that when I was young. You will not get caught with your pants down here if you do these seven things, you will catch the devil every time, okay? Mouth or two or three witnesses, every word that God tells you, God told me to marry him. God told me to go here. God told me to buy that. God told me to go. That's fine. God may have, in fact, told you that. Two or three. Then you got to test the spirits using your various levels of discernment. Okay? Section nine. Last one. Oops. This one? This one here? Yeah. Oh, take a picture? Okay. There you go. And then this one here, the big seven. This is really helpful. YouTubers, uh, copy this down when you go back and look at the teaching. This important slide here. Okay? Remember, remember the time on the teaching. This will help you. <clears throat> okay? Tonight, I was supposed to meet with... Uh, two people before the service. Are they here? Ron, are you here? Is Ron here? Ron Estrada? Okay. He's not here. This young kid I met on YouTube a couple of years ago came here for deliverance with his mother from Texas. And the mother has terrible lust demons. And she doesn't want anything to do with deliverance. Because back in Dallas, she's got her eye on a guy. If you have an eye on a guy, you can't get the demons out. And you can quote me on that. Well, he goes through deliverance, but it was only a partial deliverance. He'd been very abused as a child. He had prob dad issues and all kinds of things. I think he was like 19 when he came a couple of years ago. He turns his life over to the Lord after he gets delivered. And I mean, this kid's a dream kid, a dream preacher's dream. He starts studying the Bible. He goes to church. He's a, I mean, he's on fire for God. The Bible calls it having your first love. The most Christians have lost their first love and can't stand people who have it. If you have your first love, everybody's going to go, holy, oh, geez. Because you remind them of what you used to be and how far you've sunk. So you don't want to be around somebody with their first love because it makes you feel like crap. Okay? So this guy's got his, he's on fire for God. He's doing great. I was... Proud of him, happy, send him Facebook messages. He's watching videos. Things are going great with this kid. Couldn't have been happier. And what happened to him next is what I what I knew was gonna happen. I hadn't heard from him for a while. Come to find out he was engaged. And he'd fallen in love. <laughs> Oh, man. Normally, that's a happy thing, unless you've been a counselor for 35 years. <laughs> it's, not, it's not happy anymore in my shoes. Not happy anymore. So, I never said anything. I was too detached. You know, somebody in Texas is, you know, I'm too... F I thought to myself, oh, God, this is a setup. You know, a few months later, boom, she's gone. <clears throat> exactly what happened is what I knew would happen. I, saw, I read his Facebooks, okay? 
God, God sent me a beautiful wife. Here's what she looks like. I looked at the picture. Boy, she's cute. She looks like a really nice person. Now I'm sicker. <laughs> and God told us to get married. And we, she wants to miss. She she wants to minister here like I do, and she wants this like I do. And so, I'm, oh no. It's a perfect match. Now I'm really sick. Well, you know the story. She disappears. You know, he goes through a down period. Then he comes back, praise God, and comes back with enthusiasm. Fire returns to his belly. He's got his first love again. He's great. This kid's great. The devil goes, so well, the fiance thing didn't work. So I'm going to send the next thing to young people. Okay? He always does this to the young people who have their first love. Okay, what I'm telling you now is what they, the devil does to all of them. <laughs> all these young people on fire for God go into the, the devil's system of backsliding. Here's how he works it. He sends them romance that fails. He tries to drag them down. If that doesn't work, he then tells them, look, you're so excited and enthused about God and nobody else is. You go to this church, they're all dead. You go to the meeting, they're dead. How come nobody has the enthusiasm I do about Christ. What's the problem? The devil then tells the person, you know something, you're special. You're a special person. And it's accepted instantly because they are special. And they look special. He goes to the church and sits there and then he sits with all these lukewarm Christians. And then he's working on a job that is not ministry. So the devil comes to the person and says, Hey, you're working eight hours a day for eight, ten, twelve bucks an hour. And that's all wasted time. The devil says, You should be out preaching and praying for the sick and casting demons out of people. Don't you remember Brother Mike? <laughs> of course, he remembers me. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a job, and that's a waste of time. I need to be serving God full time. Sound familiar? He quits his job. He hooks up with another guy who feeds this exact same scenario into him. He quits his job, he loads up his car, and he leaves Texas. To do what? Oh, you know what? Travel around the country serving God. Praying for the homeless, witnessing, passing out tracts, doing God's stuff, because working is not of any real value. It's an easy sell. For the demons they easily sold that to him why because they know he's a good person they know he loves God they know he has enthusiasm and he still has his first love the demons already stole that from the other Christians they don't have that anymore they don't care that much about God most Christians don't care very much about God if he fits in a certain spot or you can use him as filler or like a flat tire and ride him to town to get the tire replaced. They're okay with God. But people that are, have their first love, they want God everywhere. They want everything God. They're great. They're wonderful. It's just so refreshing. Not. So they tricked the guy into abandoning his life and now serving God full time. And now he's going to travel around. United States because God told him God told him familiar spirits God 
told him to do this. Never checked with me. Wouldn't you have thought he would have called me? He came here for deliverance. Hey, I want to run this by you, Brother Mike. Hey, when you're young and inexperienced and enthusiastic, you lack one thing that cannot be replaced. Experience. I would have saw right through the whole thing instantaneously had I been given that information in time to stop it, which I was not. The Bible says if a man should not work, neither should he eat. So now what do I got to do? I have in some way got to get to this kid after the fall or before the fall comes. Because the devil is trying to do what? Steal Pump him up and then crash him. See, the higher he gets you up, the further the drop. It's a Jim Baker syndrome. The devil pushed him up to the pinnacle of everything. Money, fame, fortune, notoriety. It was all there. But don't you see, the higher you go up, the further he pushes you off the ledge. <sighs> there you go. Jim Baker ended up under the desk in the judge's office, crying. As they took him to prison. Yep. Nobody remembers any of that? Okay. He had everything. This familiar spirits gave him everything. Yep. Familiar spirits will send you people to compliment you and bless you and give you money and pump you up. Watch it. They did that to Jesus. Hey, we want to make you our king. He took off and ran. If Jesus runs from some people, you better learn to run. Come on. There's your seven, and let's wrap it up. What's God's will for you, the kingdom of heaven? You have authority over spirits if you will just learn to exercise it and receive it. Luke chapter 10. There it is. You have power to bind their supernatural power. You can do that. Matthew chapter 18, but you must learn to do it. You must step out on faith and do it. You can loose, you can bind in Jesus' mighty name. John chapter 14, when you pray, God will answer your prayers. You are a child of God in good stead with God because of the blood, and your prayers are golden. You must understand and know in your mind that demons are afraid of people who use the Holy Ghost. They are not afraid of Christians. They laugh their guts up, the Christians. People who have the Holy Ghost and know how to use Him, the demons fear only one person. That is the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. You can be successful in the spirit world by doing what? Self-deliverance. Mark chapter 16. You can deliver yourself or anyone else. The Bible says you can you can lay hands on yourself or anybody else, and they will, Kalos, get well. You can start tonight. <laughs> that was a fast wrap-up. All right, let's, any questions here before we're closing? None here? Good. Any questions here? Anybody? Yes, sir. Your spirit man. Your spirit man? You saw what? Oh, your spirit man. Okay, I'll tell you after the service here. Stay here. Yeah. Over here. So, Brother Mike, so for as far as familiar spirits, earlier in the teaching, we mentioned they're dead and they're in hell. Are all of them dead? What's that, ma'am? The familiar spirits. No, they're not dead in hell. They're all over the place. Okay. I was talking about the people. Okay, the 
people. They're already dead and in hell, but the familiar spirits that were with that people in this life are talking to the medium, giving them the information. So, the, so um, Henry shares the information from a spirit who was with the person when they were alive. That person is dead and in hell already. And then also for familiar spirits, like when you know they're t they come into your life or people, do those people know that they are carrying a familiar spirit or they're being used? Not if not Christians, no. Well, actually, no. Basic basically, no. Psychics don't know they have demons. They actually think they have some special gift from God to communicate with the dead. But what about without a psychic, like a normal person that's like in your life that sort of like just seems to like cause you trouble? You well, know that maybe that's the familiar spirit that they're just there to attack you? Okay, she said a normal person and they're causing lots of trouble. Uh, no, th those are called relatives. Now, <laughs> how it works is if the person has witchcraft spirits, they know they have these demons. Witch, witches and warlocks and sorcerers, they know they have these demons. If it's a Christian minister that has kundalini spirits, or if it's a, a person who is a psychic, they don't know they have the spirits, they're being tricked and used. It's deception. But witches know they have demons. They're, they're, no, and they know the demons put, carry the curses and put them on you. Yeah, sir, right here. When you were showing all the pictures of the people that you know, fell in the air and uh, McPherson and all those other people from uh, Pride, I just saw Pride. Is Pride part of it? Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, I'm saying that it is definitely. They got prideful, and that's like an open door the size of a broadside of a barn for every demon from the pit of hell to come in because Pride comes before a fall. Yeah, pride, pride is, is it's like speed bagging, you know. You see uh, Mayweather working the bag on TV the other night. See that? Isn't that awesome? Uh, he's got super fast hands. Great boxer. <clears throat> Demons may weather you. They don't just use one thing on you. Okay? But in the glamour world of TV preaching or mega churching or pastor or whatever, that's an ego-based system. And the way it gets that way is that the demons tell the Christians to compliment the person all the time. And so they're constantly getting barraged by, hey, you did a great job, you're an incredible teacher, you're the bomb, you're this and that. And so the demons build up inside the person's soul this elevated sense of self. And so me having limos and mansions to anybody else, that's obviously satanic. But to me, after I've been filtered through this pride system, I deserve it. It seems normal to me. <coughs> to other people, it's obviously satanic. You want five limousines and live in two? You got mansion? That's nuts. But if you've been in that system and you've been told you're great continuously, decade after decade, that seems normal and average compensation to you. It seems right. Your sense of self runs away with you. When that starts to happen, you're, you're headed for a fall. Like he said, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And that's what it is. Familiar spirits. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a question. Okay, he said we, okay, we have greater power than, well, Jesus sends greater power than he did, right? To us. What's that? Yeah. yeah like, Say that again. Jesus went to God, okay? He said, I will send the comforter, and you will have greater power over the enemy, right? Right. The Holy Ghost is our great power, yes. And we find, okay, so right. we find the demon that is that's bothering us, okay? Mm -hmm. Can we find him from, okay, you said if we, I don't know how to explain, okay, we find him, can we find him from thinking or speaking evil? But I like, like, you know, to, to the spirit? Yeah. Can we bind the spirit from doing certain things? Yeah, yeah you thinking, can. And yeah. 
um, like, like, like sending out messages to the other demons, the Sepagas, the Rainer, and the Marvel. Can you do that? Okay, uh, she said, uh, can you bind spirits from communicating with other spirits in the spirit world? Uh, I don't know. Not sure. I've had I've heard some ministers say you can, some say you can't. I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, you're talking about the transform mind, and like, how can you um, keep? If you don't transform your mind, are you open to the mind of attack? Do you just come in and work? You were speaking about it, and I didn't. If you don't renew your mind or transform your mind. Or is your mind subject to demons? Of course it is. Absolutely. They'll, they constantly control. That's how they control people. They call, control them through their minds. That's their number one goal. Whoever gets the person's mind gets the rest of the person. Yeah, that's their number one target is your mind. All right. Is that good? Then we'll turn the lights off there if we can. Anybody in there? <coughs> Turn these. Yeah, thank you. All right, look, we'll close in prayer then, streamers. Father, uh, streamers, don't turn off the computer. We're going to go to our prayer service. Father God, uh, I'm done with the Spirit World Seminar. I will uh, pick it up again in 2020. And uh, <laughs> I thank you for your word. I thank you for uh, all the information you've given me about the Spirit World. But I do not know all the answers and do not have all the answers. But I know the Holy Spirit has all the answers. That I am absolutely sure of. And I know that his main answer is love. His main answer is caring. His main answer is to heal and to deliver using the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Christ. And that's going to happen tonight. So Lord, I pray for every person that needs to be delivered from familiar spirits, witchcraft, childhood curses, word curses, generational curses, curses in their bloodline, curses in their family tree, curses their parents heaped on them, curses that were spoken over them in the womb, familiar spirits that got in their family tree through witchcraft, through sorcery. In the name of Jesus, those demons will be bound tonight, and every person who's willing to fight, and every person who's willing to step up and step out on their faith, in Jesus' mighty name, gets delivered and gets healed. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. The seminar part four of the Spirit World Seminar is now over. <laughs> we will pick it up in a few years and do it again. <laughs> I'm glad I only do that once every two, or three or four years. That was a long one there. <laughs> All right. If you need prayer tonight and you have been uh, attacked by witchcraft, sorcery, or curses, generational curses, curses from your family tree, demons from your mom and dad, demons from your grandparents, they were involved in wickedness, they were involved in witchcraft or sorcery, these are the worst spirits you can come across. These familiar spirits are the most powerful and the smartest of all the spirits. They will tear you to shreds. They will spread diseases and illnesses in your family you can't even believe. They will cause barrenness that will shock you. You'll have a string of women who can't have babies in that family tree. That's a generational curse. Rejection demons love letting in familiar spirits. Rejection demons get in in childhood from their dysfunctional family members, from parents, crazy fathers, drunken mothers, you name it. These rejection spirits will attack you through abuse, and then later on they will introduce you to the spirit world. Sorcery, witchcraft, new age, different things. And these familiar spirits will then come in. And once they get in, huh, trust me, folks, it's, you know it. It's, it's hell on wheels. Hell comes to breakfast. If you have a Native American background, you have had different Native American spirits in your family tree. You're part Cherokee. You're part Navajo. Your great-granddad was a shaman. Uh, you went to a sweat lodge. You used to wear Indian jewelry. And you look so pretty, turquoise. Oh, that's so, so nice. You have picked up familiar spirits. 
These are scary spirits. They spread diseases. The diseases among Native Americans are frightening. Frightening. Suicide, alcoholism, diabetes, rampant in Native American communities. The Holy Ghost loves Native Americans as much as he loves any other person. Eh? But these spirits and that family are very scary. Very scary. Eh? This kid here picked up demons where? In his family tree. Okay, he didn't do it. Okay, children can't sin. See that kid right there? He's chock full of. He's got ADHD and everything. Those are spirits, but they come down through the parents, the grandparents. They attack the children. Okay, children cannot sin. They are not sinners. They're not sinning. It's not them doing it. Okay, he's too young to be sinning. Okay. In Romans, Paul said, "Your sin is not imputed to you until your conscience matures." To the point that you know the difference between right and wrong. Okay? This is our ministry team coming up so we can start praying here. Get ready. Come up. You have some kind of spirit in your family tree. Which ones do you have? Oh, man. Generational. What's the name of them? Uh, what kind? I'm, half, I'm not half, but I've been American in my bloodline. Generous. My grandpa preached your guilt. And what do you need to be uh, delivered of? I don't even know anymore, man. What's wrong with you? Oppression. Oppression. Oppression of? I just lost my job. Oh, I didn't lose my job, but um, they pretty much said there's no more, more work, and that seems to be a cycle for me. That's uh, a cycle. Okay, now, did you hear what he said? He said he has a cycle of losing jobs. See, that's a curse. They, they, they make money for a while, and then it crashes. And they're up for a while, boom, the thing tanks. See that? That's a curse that came down from the family tree. Nailed that poor guy. If he doesn't get that curse broke off him, if he doesn't stop sinning and turn his life over to Christ, he will be broke at my age in his 60s. That guy will still be broke. Wow. How do I know that? You know the devil and so do I. The devil is a very faithful person. He's very consistent. You can, you can trust him. He will stab you in the back. He will ruin your life and you can trust him. The devil will come through if you let him in. You can trust him. You can trust the Holy Ghost more. If you'll repent of your sin tonight and confess it, the blood of Jesus will save you and we can get rid of these demons and get that curse broke off that guy. What's wrong with you, sir? Oh, my God. You got a couple hours. <laughs> I know. I was What's a psychologist. The main thing? They took my license away. My wife of 22 years didn't like it because I lost all that money and she divorced me. I was abused, kicked, and stomped by my dad when I was a year and a half old. My brother killed himself. My mother killed herself. Wow, my dad did you? told everybody that he wished it would have been me every time. Did you hear that story there? Now, that guy was talking about his dad, and his dad had put word curses on the family. Okay. Some of them fell on that poor guy. His dad probably didn't know he was speaking a word curse. He probably wasn't into witchcraft. See, the, the devil fooled his dad. The dad brought the demons in, and they dumped him on the son. Oh, now he got the Ouija board. So that now he asked for familiar spirits. Okay, so this poor guy's life is always going to go like this until he gets delivered. See. He'll be successful for a while, and then they'll trash him down. The devil pushes him off the cliff. He lets him get up a little ways. Then he pushes him to another drop, see? And as you do that over the years, you get more sick and more discouraged, and pretty soon you give up. He literally beats the life out of you. It all started with the poor guy's dad. His dad was hurt as a kid. What's wrong with you, honey? I have two mentally ill parents. My mother suffers from anorexia. My father committed suicide. I was left homeless at 15 years old. I've been raped. I've been abused physically, mentally, emotionally. And I cannot have children. Okay, now, did you everybody hear that? All right, now, see, those are spirits in the family tree, putting curses on everybody. She's a prime candidate to get healed. Uh, she's exactly the kind of person the Holy Ghost is looking for. She could be the poster child of God's love. He hunts them down first. 
the worst things that happen to you seems like the more he loves you. I know that's not true, but it seems that way. That's great. All right. Uh, who else? Who all is here tonight? Besides us. That's it. This is all we got. Okay. All right. You ready? What's wrong with you, sir? Uh, lost demons, uh, fear demons, just uh, addictions, bad addictions. Like addictions to what? Sex. Okay. But uh, before that, when you were young, what was the problem? Fear. Was, uh, Who hurt Major you? child abuse. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, did you hear what that guy said? He had major issues with lust, probably porn, sex addiction, bad women. But that's not the problem. The problem came from his childhood. He was abused by his dad. His spirits got in when he was a kid. The lust demons took him when he was young, then drove him into a life of misery, suffering and sorrow. Correct? Is that right? Yeah. Misery, suffering, and sorrow? Yes. Is that some yeah? Yeah. How did I know that? Okay. Who's ready? You ready to go? Okay. Close your eyes now. Just take a big breath. Close your eyes. Streamers, you pray along with me. You pray along with me. Pray along with me now. Streamer, or I mean, YouTubers, listen to me and pray with me. Come on now. Close your eyes now. Thank you, Jesus. You just close your eyes. See this heartbroken mother? She is worn out. I'm the grandmother. Grandma. Oh, my goodness. When she was a mother, she was worn out. And now she's a worn out grandmother. She loves her family and loves her children. And she is heartbroken. And God wants to heal her heart first. Right now, let your tears go. Come on. Come on now, let your tears go. I want you to release your family now. Right now, turn them over to the Lord. Come on now. And just there we go. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Come on, close your eyes. Come on now. I know you've had a hard life. I know things have gone horrible for you. Just pray. Humble yourself and relax and pray. Come now, concentrate now. Your mind runs a mile a minute all the time. Just slow your mind down. Calm down. Just calm down. There you go. Just relax. Calm down and relax. Take a big breath. Lord Jesus, I am so... So sorry. So sorry for my family's horrible sins. So sorry for my sins I added to my family. Okay, close your eyes. Your mind is running a mile a minute. Okay, well, you're not going to get any deliverance if you keep letting your mind run. Okay, close your eyes and relax. Just relax. Thank you, Jesus. Relaxing now. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to bless this man with a gift of godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. His heart has gotten hard. There it is, right there. Hardness. His heart is hard. Close your eyes. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Please forgive me. The Holy Spirit starting to move. Just relax while he moves. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Lord, I'm so sorry. I confess the evil sins of my grandparents and my grand my mother and father. Just confess it. Tell him you're sorry. Come out, Satan. Tell him you're sorry. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord. Come out of there, you rotten demon. Come out of there, you stinking pervert. I bind your power, you pervert. Come out of there, you lust demon. Get out of my eyes right now. I bind you witchcraft and sorcery. I bind you child abuse spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Child abuse, sorrow, and misery come out of the mom. Come out of grandma right now. I bind you child abuse. Get out of my body right now. Get out of there. Children, come out right now. Sadness and sorrow come out of that body right now. There it comes. Come out of that body right now. Come out of there. Get out of my head right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every ugly man that ever touched me comes out of me tonight. Every ugly man, every one of them comes out. Every transfer spirit, I bind fornication and adultery. I bind anger and bitterness and ought against others. Get out of my head right now. Come out of my head. Get out of my mind. I break this evil curse of my father and my mother off of me. Satan, I command you, break. Break. Break off there. Break off there. Satan, I bind your power. Break. Break now. Break in Jesus' name. Family curses. Break off the man of God. 
demons from his dad. Break! Abuse, rejection, negativity, lies. A witch, come out of his body right now. There he is. Here he comes. Come out of his stomach right now. Go! Come out of his stomach. Come out. Come out. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Come on, just repent. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on, YouTubers. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I am so sorry for what I've done. I'm so sorry. Come out of here, stinking pervert. Come out of here. Come out of my body right now. Take a breath of love. Come out right now, you pervert. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Come out of there. Right now. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you lust monster. Get out of there. Stop it. There he comes. Come out. There he comes. Come out, you pervert. Come out of that body right now. Hold that. Come out of your body right now. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out now. Go. Come out of his general. Right now. There he is. Come out. Evil, come out of it. Evil, come out. There he comes. Father, forgive me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm too smart. I think too much. I collate spiritual things. I need childlike faith. I need to give my gift of tears to come back to me. Where's my gift of tears? Where's my childlike faith? Come back to me. Come back to me. Come on. I bind every demon of abuse from your parents, from your mother and father. We bind those spirits and command them to come out. Oral sex. Come out of that body right now. Oral sex. Come out. Oral sex. I command you to come out of that man. There he is. Here it comes. Go. Come out. Come out faster. Come out quicker. Come out there, you pervert. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. There he is. Here he comes. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Get out of that body, I said. Come out of there. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right now. Evil. Evil. I command you to come out. Evil. Evil. Come out. Give me back my tears, Lord. Help me. Give me back. Which have spirits or my family? They're attacking my family. My daughter was just my daughter was in a car accident. The car was. They're trying to kill her. They're trying to murder your daughter. Release her to God, Lord. I place my daughter in your loving hands right now, and I command that witchcraft spirit to break off of her. And unbelief and doubt and fear to come out of me. Satan, come out now. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Faster. Faster. What's your dad's name? Eugene. My mother, my mother was part Cherokee too. Eugene is my dad's name. Eugene. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You follow my lead. Lord Jesus, I lift my dad up here. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. All right. Father, my dad is dead. And he let a bunch of demons into my family tree. He let demons into me. Rejection spirits. By verbally abusing me. Physically abusing me. And he hurt me bad. And I'm going to release my dad tonight. And let him go from my soul. I'm going to let my dad go. There it is. There he is. Come out. I'm going to let my dad go now. And replace him with my heavenly father. In the name of Jesus. Take a breath and blow. Keep blowing. Come out, Dad. Eugene, come out of him. Come out of him. Bitterness, anger, child abuse. Come out. Come out of him. I let my dad go now. I let my dad go now. I let him go now. Right now, in the spirit of fear, I bind your power. Gene, you leave me right now. Gene, you leave me right now. Hatred for women. Disappointments. Sadness. Fear of the future. I release it now. Spirit of fear, I command you to let me go. Come out of my head right this second. Get you out of there right now. You get out of my frontal lobe right this second. I want you out right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, you get out of that body. Come out of there. Come out. Every bad boyfriend I ever had, I'm releasing them tonight out of my soul. Every one of them. Lust. 
fornication, lust. I forgive my I forgive my ex-wife right now. I forgive her and I release her from my soul right now. I release my ex-wife from my soul. Fear come out of there right now. Every every man you ever dated. Let's go. Stand up. Oh, we gotta get rid of every one of these men. All of them. Okay? So take a breath and go. Come out. Come on. Every every guy that ever touched me. Come on, I'm gonna let him go. I'm gonna let him go right now. I told you to get out of my head. Every guy that ever touched my body, I release right now. I release the transfer spirits. I release these transfer spirits right now. In the name of Jesus. I release this transfer spirit. Right now. Every boyfriend, I let him go. Every man. Every time I compromise my faith, I let him go. Every curse word I ever said, every time I yelled at my parents, every time I brought a curse on myself, I release it right now. In the Jesus, I release it right now. Go. Go. Come off. Come out. There he is. Come out. Tattoo spirit, I bind your power. Tattoo demons, come out of there. Come out. There you come. Come out right now. Hold that, hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Tattoos. If you have a tattoo. If you have a tattoo. Remember I close your eyes. Speak in demonic tongues, but remember I did not sin. What? I speak in demonic tongues and I did not sin. No, you didn't sin. Close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I love you. Come into my heart. Send me the Holy Spirit. Because I love you tonight and I praise you. I love you and I praise you. Get out of there. I love you and I praise you. Now in Jesus' holy name. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want you to go into my heart. Please lift out this horrible wound from child abuse. And we take this demon out of my body that tells me to eat for comfort. Unclean spirit. Unclean spirit of food. Come out of there right now. Child abuse, come out. Go. Go. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Let's go. Pray harder. Pray harder. Let your tears go. Come on. Every one of them go. Keep coughing. Come out, spirit. Come on. What do you need to have? Just your Take it all. Heaviness. The burdens that he has been carrying. What are you been doing? I feel like the is right every day. We break every chain. What do you do to you? You know? Well, I feel like the pressure in the past, but I feel like now it's just... There's some things that you can do that it just What's his name? Adrian. Adrian, okay, ready? Close your eyes. Lord Jesus, tonight I must release my husband into your loving hands. And every spirit transferred in my body from Adrian, I release. And I command it to come out. Go. Adrian, come out. Get up. Hatred for Adrian. Come out. Right now, come out. Come out. There it is. Let your tears go. Go. Adrian, come out of her. We break every curse of infirmity. Come out right now. Come out right now. In Jesus' name. Come out right now. Come up and out this man. Come out right now. What you need? Taylor, what do you want? What do you need God to do for you? We've been calling it out. Fear of pain. Fear of pain is one of them. Fear of what? Fear of pain. Are you in pain? Oh, okay. That's not real pain. That's demonic. Well, how did it get in originally? Adrian, come out. Keep coughing. There it is. Here he comes. Go. Come out. Come out of there. Right now. Come out. How did he get in there? Come out. Come out right now. Okay. Now the root of it is, since you're already a Christian, and you love the Lord, don't you? 
Yeah, but you, your root problem is you don't think God's going to take care of you. You don't believe it. Lack of trust. Yeah, you see God as a screw-up like you do the rest of us. Yeah, because you, you say, well, he's not going to protect me if I get in a rollover. The demons are lying to you. See, fear, fear is the polar opposite of faith. If you have fear, you have no faith. If you have faith, you have no fear. Eh? There you go. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I'm going to release my husband right now and every negative thought and emotion I have about him. Now come out. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for being afraid because that means I don't trust you. And I'm saying you are not a trustworthy person. You cannot be trusted. And that is, and I know in my mind that's wrong, but in my soul, I don't. And so I repent of that. I do trust you. I can trust you. You will take care of me. You will never leave me or forsake me. You are my friend. You do love me. And this lying spirit in my brain and this fear spirit in my soul must come out and come out now. Right now. How you doing? Hmm? Yeah. Um, he's like my husband. I knew it was going to be quick, but I've been having like, I don't know, because I just had my baby six months ago. So I don't know if it's like postpartum depression, but lately I've just been like crying for every little thing. I don't know why. That happens all the time. Close your eyes, take a big breath. Spirit, I bind your power when you got in during the delivery process. I command you to come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out. There he comes. There he is. Postpartum fear, spirit. Come out. Come out of there. Spirit of grief and sorrow. Come out. Right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Sadness and misery and sorrow. Come out of me. Come out. Every spirit from birth. Come out. Get out of my stomach. Come out of my body right now. There it is. Let your tears go. Coming out right now. Coming out right now. You get out of my body right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I've had enough of you. Get out of there right now. Go. Come out. Come out of me. Get out of there. Come out of the body. There he goes. Come out of that body. Come out of the stomach. Come out of me. Stop torturing him. There he comes. Come out right now. There he comes. Come out of the groin. Come out of there, you stinking pervert. Come out right now. Go. Go. Father's hatred. Come out. Come out. Get out. Get out. It's fine right now. Go. Come out there. Get out. Of the right Come out of his spine. Come out. Come out. Come out of the spine. Get out of that body right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go. Get out of there. Thank you, Jesus. There it went. Another one bites the dust. What's left in there? Come on. Who else you got problems with? Recently, my friend, hey, just recently, I knew she was struggling a lot being, you know, in her Christian walk and everything, and she kind of, like, backslid really seriously. She went back to, like, a Mexican Christian church, and I feel like now she has a Kundalini, but she doesn't believe her anything I say, and she just... And that frustrates you? It doesn't frustrate me. It just hurts me, and then... She What's her kinda, name? She backslid me just recently, so that... What's her, her name? Irene. Irene. Okay, raise your hands. Ready. Lord Jesus, forgive me for developing aught in my soul for Irene. That is a sin. She hurt me and I took an offense. And then the devil took me. I took an offense and the devil took me. Well, tonight, I forgive Irene and I bless her and I release her from my soul right now. 
and I repent of this. Oh, there it comes. Here she comes. Come out. Come out. There she comes. Go. Irene, come out of her. Come out. Right now. Come out. Come out of her body. Head to foot. Go now. Head to foot. Go. Did Jesus? Did you repent of that? Yeah. More to come. Yeah. Once the faith goes here, the fear. It's like a kid on teeter top. Okay. All the tightness in my core and abdomen. It's gone. I'm just. He wants me to stay in prison, so I was gonna walk out. Oh, down, please. I, I no, don't walk out. Come on up here. Turn around out here. Close your eyes. Are you leading the praises? This guy here just got delivered from a fear demon in his stomach. This guy got delivered of a fear demon in his stomach. He's our, he's leading the praises tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Thank you for healing me, Lord. Come on, louder. Louder, sir. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I repent of taking aught and offenses against people. That's a sin. I repent of it right now. Come on, sweetheart. Just repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you. Satan, I bind your power. I command you to come out of me. Every sin from my grandma and grandpa. Every ugly sin from my mother and my dad. I command you by the authority of the word of God. Every spirit you picked up getting a tattoo. Tattoo demons. I bind your power. Tattoos. Tattoo. You come out. We cancel the assignment of that Tattoo. You come out. To the prostate. I command every spirit attached to my body through a tattoo to come out. I renounce this tattoo. I renounce this tattoo. I bind its power. I command it. Go! Religious jewelry. You got a bunch of religious jewelry. You rotten spirit, I bind your power. Jesus pictures, Jesus faces, Jesus medallions, Jesus crap. I bind all that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command religious jewelry spirits to go. I got the Holy Ghost. I don't need a picture of Mary. Native American spirits, Catholicism demons, Mormon demons, Jehovah Witness demons. I renounce that background. I renounce that evil. Thus saith the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let them return unto the Lord and he will have mercy. Let them return unto our God for he will abundantly pardon. Come on. Just repent of it tonight. YouTubers, stand in front of your computer right there. Put your hands on your body. And repent. Tell the Lord you're sorry for what you've done. Tell him you're going to repent and not do it again. If you do that, the demon's power over you will shatter. You believe there is one God, you do well. The demons also believe and they tremble. They tremble. Friso is the Greek word. It means to shudder in fear. If you will repent, if you will change, if you will confess your sin, the devils will crumble in your life. They will crumble before you. Come on. Have you not known? Says the Lord. Have you not heard? The Lord, the God, the everlasting God, fainteth not, neither is weary. The young men, they will grow weary. The youth, they will utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength like eagles. If I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Hey, if you won't confess it, if you won't confess it, you got to keep it. If you don't have the guts to confess it, you're a coward, then you got to keep it. you got to keep it. If you're going to take worry and fear and not use your faith, 
Your children are going to be sacrificed on the altar of sin to Satan. Your children will die and go to hell. They're being oppressed by demons as I'm speaking to you. You change, exchange your fear tonight for faith and attack those demons attacking your children. Come on, let's do it. I repent of being afraid. I repent of fear. And I step out with my faith right now and I command you, Satan, take your stinking hand off my son. Take your stinking hand off my daughter right now by the authority of the word of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I command you, let my baby Are you physically ill tonight? It's easy to get healed. Put your hand where your pain is, quickly. Put your hand where your pain is. If it's a demonic illness, you bind that spirit of pain. Spirit of pain, I bind your power. If you're sick because you have unforgiveness and ought, come on, just repent of it. Just repent of it. Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh God, bless that person. Oh God, I repent of having ought. And I repent of having unforgiveness. Just confess it. Just confess it. Then command the demon to come out. Put your hand there. Satan, I bind your power. Yes, I've had enough of it. If you haven't had enough of it, you got to keep it. If you can live with it, you got to keep it. If you can live with it, that means you got to keep it. This isn't rocket science. Hey, I'm not Albert Einstein. This isn't rocket science. If you can live with it, the devil tells you, you got to keep it. That's it. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Do you hate it? Do you hate it? If the answer is no, you will leave here tonight sick. You will never be cured. You will die sick. Well, that's not encouraging. It is meant to be encouraging. I'm warning you. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Hate unbelief. Hate doubt. Hate sin. Hate sickness. Hate wickedness. Hate witchcraft. Hate sorcery. Hate cowardice. Hate, hate it. You got to hate it. Well, I don't hate it. What do I do? Ask God to give you the gift of hate. It's that simple. I'll help you. Lord Jesus, I do not hate things that you hate. I do not hate things I should hate. And I apologize. I'm sorry for that. And I'm going to repent of it right this second. Right now, I'm going to repent of it. Right now. You were talking about earlier in the loins. I used the word loins. I don't have it. How'd I get in? I won't take it no more. I was sexually abused when I was young. There's a team. Oh, by who? Uh, a guy, uh, my, a guy from high school. His brother. What's his name? Uh, Dave, Dave Lipinski. He died in prison. He got stabbed Dave. nine times. Dave, uh, Dave Lipinski. Early exposure to pornography too. No. Uh, Dave, Dave, when he was young. Dave, is that his name? Is that his name, Dave? Dave, when, you know, when he was young, somebody got to him. Somebody got him. The spirit transferred into Dave from some guy that pervert. Somebody got him. Babysitter or something. Dave got infected with lost demons. Then they told him to spread them to you. He fondles you. They transfer out of Dave into you 30 years ago. 
then you started committing lust sins, which fed them and gave them permission to never come out. Can I tell you something else? My sister and I used to look at Playboy and Playgirl magazines together when we were younger because they were all over the house. From who? Your dad or mom? Oh, Playgirl and Playboy. Oh, my parents had them. Yes. And also, my parents, I used to masturbate at a very young age. Now, your parents, when they were young, your parents, when they were young, somebody got them. Somebody got your parents when they were young. Then their spirits brought them together. They got pregnant at 18. You. The spirits then transfer from the parents into you. Then Dave comes along and transfers that buzzing guy in there. You then have a propensity for lustful activities as a child and then as an adult. That you picked up a spirit spouse. So and it's causing me not to marry, and it's yeah. also not helping me that I haven't been married either. I've been single for 30 years. Right. Or my whole life. I'm 47. Right. I've had girlfriends, but they were all unholy relationships. But they all broke off. The spirit mean. husband, the spirit spouse, the wife, the spirit spouse said, No, you're mine. So they isolate the person and they ruin all their relationships. So you have a threefold problem. Your parents' spirits are in there. The spirit wife or spouse is in there. And Dave's thing is in there buzzing. Threefold. Jesus Christ, yeah. I don't understand it. Uh, a demon took you as his spouse. This thing doesn't stop. It's not. Stop. But that's Dave. Even in church, you don't stop. That's Dave. Yeah, but that's a spirit in your body. Your spirit man has the Holy Spirit. The demon's not in your spirit man. He's in your body. So he manifests at church because he doesn't want to be there. Is that in there from perversion and bitterness and unforgiveness and hardness of heart? And all that only adds to it. That came later. Yeah, I have a lot of things. No, that added later. So you're actually a, a multi-layered demonic mess. So to get it all cleaned out, you have to go back to the beginning. Parents' sins. I want to meet with you. I'm on Facebook. Hmm? I meet with you? Yeah. You got to start here at the beginning. <clears throat> so you see it started here parents Dave spirit wife all the broken relationships your sexual sin adultery porn lust of the eyes whatever it was adding to it oh geez that's a whole different thing that's the women here here see here's rock and roll so all these things loaded you up so you're kind of like a bucket and you're like fill up to here in order to remove all that out of you you're not completely gone because you're standing here talking to me and you still love the Lord and you want to be healed do you think not being fathered by my parents? Uh, yeah. anything to do with it? Of course. That's what all John has with all church guys claims. You know, I'm not saying his ministry is no. perfect or all together right. No, John's good, but here's the rejection spirit that got in here that came from your dad. Okay, so causes my mind. See? No, it's, all, it's right. Correct. It's all negative. That's him controlling your mind. 
but he let in all these other spirits. All these are in. Christians even make jokes about it. Spirit of rock and roll has never left me. It's demonized me my whole life. No, I know. Yeah. I know that it's from Bible to hell. Christians yeah. even think that it's cool that I play guitar really well. That's because they're spiritually ignorant. But what you have to do is go back here. Go back here. Okay. Mom and Dad. Go here first. And I'll show you how to do it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I go back in my childhood and I lift my parents up to you and my grandparents. They were all sinful. They all lived in lust. They all had lust spirits. They lived in adultery and fornication. And I apologize for that. And if they were all here tonight, I would pray and ask you to forgive each one of them. And then my parents had me, and I was an unwanted birth. I was a bastard child. But the Bible says when my parents walk out and leave me, the Lord will pick me up. And so I don't care that my parents hurt me. I don't care what they did anymore. My Heavenly Father is now my Father. My Heavenly Father is now my parents. And I ask you, God, to forgive them. And I now break these evil curses off me from my mom and dad. And I command their lust spirits to come out of my body tonight in the name of Jesus. And I forgive Dave. And I release Dave from my soul. And I command Dave's evil perversion spirits to come out of me tonight. And I'm going to start there and stay right there until they are gone. Yes. Every playboy and playgirl in my house, I renounce it. I reject it. I command it to go. Good, there you go. Keep going. Perfect. That's how you do it. Go back to your childhood. What's going on, brother? What's still left? So, for like the last year, um, and especially like a lot in the last month, for whatever reason, like I'm always thinking about like old friends that I used to have and wishing like I was like still hanging out with them and old girlfriends, like people I haven't even thought of in like 20 years. Now I'm trying to find them on Facebook. I have this desire to try to like see where they are. I don't know why. Now, you, don't, you said you don't know why. Now that's an easy one. Inside your soul, not your spirit, but inside your soul, you still like them and you still miss them so the devil has legal rights or permission by you to keep tormenting you because you don't hate it you cannot serve two masters you must hate one of them and that master there you don't hate no, that's probably true. Well, probably true. You were looking for him on Facebook. Why were you doing that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You did it for an emotional reason. What was it? What reason? Just to see how they Fond memory. Curiosity. It's a trick of the devil. He's got. He's beating you. Because like no, I know like nobody like talks to their friends. Most people like right. And most of them like have all converted into Mormonism or. You know, we're still living in sin. I mean, oh, know, sure. These aren't the kind of people I should want to associate with anyway, but I feel like I left, like, like I didn't, like, I didn't leave on, like, good terms with them, you know what I mean? And, and you I never know. left them in here. No, I didn't. I know that. They're still in there. They still are there. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Ready? Father God, I come to you tonight, and I have to repent because I have fondness for my past sins. I have fondness for people in my my past life that for brief periods of time brought me happiness and pleasure and some joy and some peace and some, some comfort and something. I got
got something out of that relationship. What's that lady? Who's that lady? That's her mom. And I don't hate it. And tonight I'm going to ask you to give me the gift of hate. Right now. Hi. You her mom? Yeah, I'm her mom. Oh, yeah. What you need? I'm just here praying for her. Mm, what's wrong with her? Well, she's just had a lot of rejection in her life right now. She's going through something. Uh, when she was little? A friend of hers. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was awful. Who, you know, who she's got a lot of my, my spirits that I had. Her dad's side, the rejection from her dad. What did you do to her when she was young? <clears throat> well, not so much when she was younger, but when I uh, she was getting bigger, um, I fell into drugs and alcohol and that sort of thing. And, you know, she was the oldest. So she's the one that got What'd the you do to her? of everything. Well, I, you do? I guess I transferred my spirits, my my anger, my rejection into her. And, and just, you know, she still has it to, to a point. So in a way you kind of caused this. Yes, I did. And you were on drugs when it happened? I was. What kind? Um, meth. Oh, meth. Oh, yeah. boy. Back meth here. and alcohol. Oh, can you mind if I pray for you? No. Close your eyes. What's your name, honey? Maria. Maria. Lord Jesus, uh, do you see this beautiful woman standing here? She had a horrible, horrible young adulthood. And she got involved with the monster, meth. And she picked up spirits, bushels of them. And then she transferred them to her children. And her, her daughter is getting delivered tonight, and I thank you for that, Lord. But she has caused a lot of pain and a lot of misery in her family. And she still has some self-disappointment and self-hatred. A little bit of it is hiding in there. It's blocking her spiritually. And tonight, she must now release these spirits of self-hatred. When she was on meth, she committed adultery. She slept with men that had demons. She was attractive, and the men were attracted to her, and they used her body. Then they transferred spirits into her womb and her stomach. And meth made sure they stayed. Well, tonight, they must come out. Guilt. Shame. Take a breath of you. Guilt. Shame. Come out. Meth, I bind your power. Meth. Every ugly man that ever touched her body. The demon that uses food as a comfort, I bind you in there. You come out too. Come out right now too. Shame and guilt over what she'd done to her family. Embarrassment and humiliation. Come out of there. Right now. Right now. Go. Right now. Go. Spirit, come out of me right now. Meth, you come out. Every spirit from meth, by bind your power. Come out of there. Every ugly man that ever touched my body, every one of them come out now. Leave me now. Fornication and adultery, go. Come out of there. Come out, I said. Guilt over hurting my daughter. Guilt over hurting her. Guilt. Lift off me. Guilt. Lift off me. Guilt. Childhood rejection. Get off of me. Come out now. Come on. Get out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Witchcraft on my mother. Witchcraft. Roman Catholicism, I bind your power. Mother Mary, demons, I bind your power. Out. Out. 
Ouch! Come out of her throat! Come out right now! Get out of there, I said! Hurry up! Come out! Here he comes! Here he comes! Get out of there! You man hater! You man hater! You self hater! You hate her, don't you? But I'm out now. The demon who hates. Go. Get out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. There it is. Here he comes. Shame and guilt, go. There it comes. Shame and guilt, come out. Right now, come out. There it comes. Shame and guilt, come out of there. Come out. Shame and guilt, go. Come out. There it is. Come out of her spine. Go. Come out. Come out of her spine. Go. Satan, lose your hold over the woman of God. Let her go. Come on, sweetie. Let your tears go. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Wasted years, wasted money, wasted lives, wasted decades. Come out! In Jesus' mighty name, come out! Come out of her feet, come out of her back, come out of her neck. Come out! Come out! Come out of that body right now! Every demon from her mother, come out of there right now! Mother spirits, come out! Come out! Every demon that transferred into your daughter, I bind your power. Come out! Let her daughter go. Let her daughter go now. The demon that picks bad men. The demon who picks bad men. Come out! The demon that picks bad men. Come out! The demon that picks bad men. Go! Go! Every spirit from her mother, go. Mother, release. Right now, release. 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 Guilt and shame and embarrassment, go in Jesus' holy name. Come on. Let's go. Right now. Let's go right now. Dear Lord, I want you to give this man a God the gift of hate. The gift of hate. I want you to give him righteous indignation and have him go into his temple and clean out the money changers so he can fulfill his dreams of being a faith healer healing people with his hands delivering them from demons and sicknesses that's his real desire in life not chasing demon infected women on Facebook no no shame and guilt come on body I said go let the man of God go let him go, I said. Come on. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get out of my way. Come on right now. There he comes. Go. Father God, he is not to waste one more day, not one more year, not one more decade. Wasted years. Come out. Wasting my life. Come out. There he is. Come out. There they come. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Every disappointment, every heartache, every sorrow, and every misery I carry in my soul, I'm releasing it tonight. Right this second. Every heartache, every sorrow. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. Mother demons, come out. Husband demons, come out. Ah, okay. Go. How are we doing? Good. I felt like I shouldn't have left the room, though. What's, what's left? I don't know. 
I think maybe there'll be more to talk about tomorrow when I can think about it. There's just so much right now. Thank you, brother. Keep coming out. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming out. Thank you. This guy is full to the rim. What's in? What's he got? Rejection, hatred, unforgiveness, opioids, heroin, methamphetamine, cigarettes, weed, bitterness, wounds of rejection, hatred towards ex girlfriends. How'd you remember all that? <laughs> Heard it before? It sounded familiar. Is he coming out? Is he repenting? Yeah, he's doing a good job. Oh, good. Hey, you don't let him growl like that. You tell him to come out. You do not. Hey, stop that. Don't you let him do that. Come on. What's his name? I'll check out his name. Son, listen to me. Don't let the demon growl like that. You tell him to come out right now. Get out of my body right now. That's right. Do not let the demon take over your personality. You have to fight back immediately. And cast that ugly thing out. How'd you do tonight? Uh, it was a lot, man. Like, I can't believe it. Like, you know what my biggest thing probably was the seraphim? Is, like, the seraphim, the seraphim spirits this whole time. Like, I don't know why. I knew that they meant body serving. Like, they got it so twisted in my head that they were, like, the highest, like, um, angels, like, for God. And I just repeat the seraphim, man. Like, it's deep. It's coming off my head. Like, this is crazy, man. This is good, though. Fuck <laughs> off. What's up, uh, the, you're the spirit man. Spirit man? That was up on that. Uh, the spirit man? <laughs> yeah, that's that's right here. Oh, okay. So it's our spirit. Yeah. Spirit, spirit, spirit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where the Holy Spirit is. He's right in there. That's how you got all the spirits out. Yeah. Uh, so, bothering spirits? That's like a... What's that? Bothering spirits? Bother spirits? That's a, you're talking about harassment? Uh, like they bother me with all these thoughts, like just brings up, just rotates in my mind, like all the stuff. They just kind of bother me with different different topics. Those are a specific kind. Of, like well, they're seducing spirits. They're seducing spirits. They get in your head. Because there, there's the lying ones, deceiving ones, and then there's the one that constantly rotates different issues are in my head to bother me. So I don't have the peace and calm that I'm supposed to have with, uh, you know, following Christ. Okay, are you, uh, are you, are you uh, fighting back against each thought and uh, command them to stop and cast that thought out? Each thought? Yeah, I'm not terribly successful all the time. Why not? I don't know. Like, I, I know this thought, like, right now, like, or half an hour ago, the thought of, like, my oven's burning, and the burner's on, it came in, and I, I, I couldn't stop it. So just, yeah, you could have stopped it, but as soon as it came in, you should need to attack it right at that moment. Yeah, that's what I did. I could and recognize then it. Then what did you do? And then I, I test it out, maybe Jesus. Did it go? <laughs> No, it's huh? just kind of loitered. Okay, now why are you laughing? Oh, I mean, because I tried hard and then. No, I didn't say. I didn't. I asked you that. I said, why are you laughing? Because I tried hard and it didn't work. I tried hard. You're laughing because of insecurity. You don't think you can stop it. Okay, so cast that out too. <laughs> Listen, if I say uh, last night I, I ran over an 80 year old lady out in the parking lot, then I took her purse and drove off. <laughs> if I start laughing about what would you think of me? Um, no confidence. Red flags would be coming up, wouldn't it? I'm laughing about something I should be weeping over and repenting over. Uh, Correct? You're giggling about something that was a, a spiritual failure on your part. Right? You said, it, you, I command you to go out. I said, did it go out? You go, <laughs> no. 
Correct? Is now what happened? Yeah. I, I, was pushing, I, mean, I was binding it for like half an hour. Half an hour? Yeah. <laughs> what was the thought? Uh, that my store was on, so You did what? Uh, so was the burner was on on my stove and then it like created fire. Okay, that was the thought. Okay, and then when you had that thought, did you uh, have any emotions attached to it, like fear the house would burn down? Yeah, I got the thought in. I hold the captive, and the fear came out to me. And then you felt like it was going to actually yeah. happen. And then my, my chest pressured up. Got don't you see the pattern there? I can't stop it. I, I, I was aggressively binding it. Yeah. Now. Uncoil these snakes right now. Let's go, your father. Open up his eyes. Uncoil these snakes. Come out of it right now. Let's go. The thought came in here. Hey, uh, I left the burner on at home. And then the next thought you had was what? Oh, there might be a fire. Okay. Now, <clears throat> right there, you gave validity to the demonic thought. You bought it. Now, had you done this, the next half hour would have never happened. If I, if I yeah. Uh, if, if, if this thought came in and you go, I left the burner on. <laughs> what a joke. But when you said, oh, no, that might cause a fire, you told the devil, I believe you. So now that's a thought you have to keep. Notice that? Yeah. Then you lied to me. Tonight, you're down here now. You lied to me and said, I can't get it out. Well, of course you can't get it out. You agreed with it there. Right. Oh my God, there's going to be a fire. What if my house burns down? Yeah. Then the next thought was, my stuff's in the house. I'm going to lose this and that and that and this. Oh my well, God. Well, after that, I stopped. And I said, there's no fire. Oh, there's the, you stopped? Yeah, no, I said, okay. there's no lie. I started countering it, countering it, countering it, uh -huh. and binding it. And I was like, no, this is a lie. Huh? But then by that time, I already have a fear reaction going on. Right. So... Now the soul kicked in. Oh, now you're trying to bind the fear. <laughs> they're running you around. Don't you see how they're beating you? It's that first minute you agreed with them, then the rest of the crap dumped in your lap. How do you beat it? The first thought comes in. What a joke. That's funny. Hey, I hope the whole house burns down. Ha, 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 ha. None of this would happen. So if you don't try it, you're going to keep doing this the rest of your life. I've been doing it for three months. So. Okay. They're smarter than we are. So he's putting that in there. He goes, I'll put this stupid thought in his head because this idiot will buy it. And once he buys it, then the fear demon will make his move. Now he's got two problems on his hands. Negative thoughts and negative feelings. Oh, God. I'm scared. See how they're beating us? Speed bagging you. Love you. You did. See? You did great tonight. All right, straight YouTubers, listen to me. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. And hit the uh, post deliverance button. It's right up at the top. Okay, and then hit the teaching button. There's an article there you have to read tonight. How Satan controls the mind. That's Article One. Article Two. Satan's counterattack. You got to read those two articles so you know exactly how you're going to get hit. You're going to get hit within 48 hours. 48 hours. Okay. Post deliverance on the internet. If you did not get rid of all the demons, hit the self deliverance button on the internet. 
All right, I'll see you next Friday, 7 o'clock, Arizona Deliverance Center.